<laughs> Madam Chair, on page 7, item 3, comment 6, I would suggest clarifying that by making it read, the metal railing on top of the stair guardrail is not supportable. Mm -hmm. And the metal railing, so strike slightly raised, the metal railing on top of the stair guardrail is not supportable. And um, I don't think it was our intention to say that they couldn't use that solution anywhere on the building, so I don't know if it would be running afoul of the rules to make new comment seven. The applicant it, um, should restudy all metal railings on top of plaster walls, so just giving a direction to restudy that instead of eliminate them. But, I, you know, I want to be consistent with what was said, so the, you tell me. Right. That, the last portion, the applicant's given the option to restudy it. I mean, restudy it. We know we didn't that's want what them. I'm saying. It, maybe, that yeah. was, maybe what you're saying is more of a clarification of what that sentence was. Yeah. Anybody want to weigh in on that? Okay, so, so it's going to say what? Instead of the, the applicant should restudy all metal railings on top of plaster walls. Okay. Okay, and then on page eight, item four, comment two. I don't really understand what that was intended to mean. Because I, I, I was wondering if it was meant to say something more along the lines of the integration with the architecture of the library is appreciated. But yes, I think that was. Yes, yeah, I have it. I have it this way: the integration of the super stop at Anacapa is acceptable. With the site, if you want to say, integration okay. of, of the or integration with the, of the super stop at Anacapa. With the existing sidewalk paving is acceptable. There you go. Okay. Okay. And then comment three should be prefaced with at the Anapamu stop, the freestanding pedestals are of concern. The material should relate to the wall. Uh, uh, wait, we should say. Um, Seating pedestals, because it's kind of confusing. Okay, the, the freestanding there. seating pedestals are of concern. Yeah. And on sorry. staff, is that clear or is it a little? The first one was, I mean, the second one was at the Anapamu Street stop. The freestanding seating. No, 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 at the Anapamu. Anapamu, thank you. Stop. The freestanding seating pedestals are of concern. Okay. And the, the first one was the. Um, Of, this, of the super stop with the sidewalk paving at the Anacapa super stop is appreciated, is, is um, acceptable. Okay. She doesn't show, okay, she got it. Great. Okay. Thanks. Page 9, item 5. Mm -hmm. Comment 6. At the very end of that, it should be the planter width, not the planter height. Uh-huh. And also on page 9, item 6. Mm -hmm. Um, comment three, I don't think was intended to be part of the motion. Uh, what was and is related to that is uh, should just say the pickets of the ramp railing should be vertical. What number is that, Steve? That's item six, uh, comment three. The very yeah, the whole of comment three. Strike that and replace it with the pickets of the ramp railing should be vertical. Oh, okay. See, on page 12, item 10, um, comment 3B, was, uh, Robert, was that intended to say that the existing ficus should be retained? Yes. Okay. That so That was a correction I had for later, but you, okay. you've uh, discovered that. It yes. It was really to protect the uh, comment related to uh, consider uh, protecting the existing canopy tree. Okay. Okay. So we just replace uh, 3B with the existing ficus should be retained. Is that good? Or uh, the uh, ficus tree, the, the existing ficus tree should remain. Okay. Simply put, the existing ficus tree should remain. Okay. That was the point. Yeah. Okay. And then um, comments uh, 3C sounds a little bit zen. Focus on the use of a small lawn. <laughs> yeah. Should that be um, minimized lawn area? Was that the intention yeah, of that? 
they, they, had, they, had, they had a minimized lawn area. So I'm trying to figure out what the purpose of the comment was, and I couldn't figure any purpose of it. No. Well, should so we just strike that? Strike I think that it's, should yeah. be struck. Let's okay. Whatever I said, never mind. <laughs> Unless you mean to say that a small lawn is unusable and therefore should be changed for something else, is, is that what you meant to say? You no, know, it was being used. They had a dis good discussion on how it would be used. And it was a minimal lawn, so it was a good idea. I think it should be struck. Okay. I don't think this is something the applicant needs to restudy. Okay. okay. And my last one on page 15, item 13. Um, under the action, I left early, so should that be five zero zero? And that's it. Yes. It's because they do not support the support the proposed awning color. The reason I was opposed was because I do not feel that it is it is it relates to El Pueblo Viejo that the project relates to El Pueblo Viejo. Okay. It wasn't just the awning color. Are there any other comments or yeah, revisions? Oh yes. Whoa. Uh, okay. I think I was asleep or something. Okay. <laughs> this is item three at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. uh, I, okay. Item three is bottom of the page. Item D in the motion. Mm -hmm. It says uh, item D reads expand the plant palette. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should read expand expand the plant palette for the second floor. Mm. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh, I have another correction. Let me find that. We okay. Look at page. Please refer to page fourteen. Oh. The historic structures report for seven ten Anna Kappa Street. At the bottom of the page in the motion, item two says amend the phrase. The feeling is generally of dereliction under the subheading seventh. Integrity of feeling, blah, blah. That item. I didn't know it was amend. I thought it was we were making a state. Uh, the, the, the reason, the comment I was making is I disagree with those statements. I agree with mm -hmm. Okay. I, I disagree. I accept the report and I disagree with, with her statements. I don't believe we asked that report to be amended. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Actually, you did. And it was, you were, what you're referring to was that um, you accepted the overall report, but didn't agree with the conclusion of the report that the building was only structure merit worthy. So that part of the report is not being amended; it's staying like it is. But uh, the way it came across to me is that you all did ask to have that um, have that uh, amended. That you didn't like the uh, term derelict. It, it could be, but I know that when I made my comment, I just disagreed with her with with her conclusion on. Her statements. I did, but maybe the commission as a whole wanted that amended. It came across it. It at least came across that way. So she made she made that uh, change. And what was the change to? Well, so she makes a statement that, that the site was had the feeling that it was generally of dereliction, and I disagreed and with I it. Disagreed. But what were we amending it to? Yeah, and what has she changed it to? Yeah. Since it's a done deal. I honestly don't remember. It's been a couple of weeks, and I think the intent was I disagreed with that statement, and I think other people felt that way too. So, so maybe we can't change the motion, but the intent. Uh, I uh, I thought the agreement was that there was a feeling of disrepair. I think the word the election was 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 the uh, the, the word that that uh, it was objectionable. I think most of us agree that, that the, the structure is, is not in very good shape. I think that that was part of uh, and, and I think the time the election was, was kind of, well, some people find it found offensive. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you change the election for this repair, the, 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 the issue goes away, in my case anyway. And like I say, for a couple of weeks, I'm reasonably sure that that's what, basically what you did, is that you just changed out the words so that it wouldn't uh, offend. 
I, I do vaguely remember the concept of dereliction versus disrepair. And I know that there I was... I think a lot of that is I disagree, and I think that's where the conversation went. That right. That disrepair should be used. Right. But it wasn't asking you to change it. It was just that we were making a statement of disagreement. All right. Uh, so. Can we say that several commissioners disagreed with the phrase, the feeling is generally of dereliction? Yes. 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 But... We and the historian was asked to amend the phrase to the feeling is generally of disrepair. I think that was all part of that discussion. So right. I, I think that's a good solution. Okay. Are there any further comments about the minutes? I'll have to abstain since I was yes. there. Right. Also. All so. right. So all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And three abstentions. Consent calendar. Consent calendar. October 15th. Item A, 120 East De La Guerra Street was final approval as noted. Mm -hmm. Item B, 791 Chapala Street was uh, forwarded up to the full board, which will be heard um, at the end of today's agenda. Item C, 201 East Figueroa Street was final approval. Um, uh. No, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, hold on. 201. Final approval as noted. Uh, mm -hmm. Item D, 1117 State Street was final approval as submitted. Mm -hmm. 123 State Street. Oh, that's why. It's a mistake. It's 1123 State Street, um, item E, and that was continued for two weeks. Huh. Item F, 24 East Carrillo Street was final approval as noted. Item G, 1528 oh. State Street was final approval as submitted. 500 Ninos Drive has been uh, referred up to the full board, which you will hear at the end of the meeting today. Uh -huh. And item I was 310 and 402 East Ortega Street was continued again for two weeks. Um, those were reviewed by Commissioner Sharp, except for items H and I, uh, which were reviewed by Commissioner Adams. I'll make a motion to ratify the consent calendar. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. The announcements. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's all right. You want to go first? Okay. <laughs> just, just, I just have a couple. Um, Chair Naylor will be stepping down from item three, two or three, Chapala Street. Commissioner Curtis will be leaving at 4:15 p.m. today. Uh, item number well six. Done. At 710 Anacaba Street has been continued two weeks at the applicant's request. And then um, my last announcement, there will be an El Torblo Viejo Design Guidelines subcommittee meeting at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, October 29th in the Fishbowl Conference Room. Thank you. Commissioner Jury, I believe yes. has an announcement. Uh, I have to for the October 29th meeting. I have to go to Nevada.
Can you give the address of the, uh, uh, the foundation so people know where to go to see it? Garden and Victoria Street. It's the action system. And if it's limited to three hours, then it'll be between 10 and 2 to get in on the weekdays. Thank you. Are there any subcommittee reports? None? Good. Possible ordinance violations? Just fill out one of the forms and report if you wish. The first item will be the archaeology report for 2140 Mission Ridge Road. Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Glassow reviewed the report and concluded that the archaeological investigation supports the report's conclusions and recommendations of the proposed project, which not have potential to result in significant impacts on either prehistoric or historic archaeological resources, and no mitigation measures are required. Um, just a moment. I do have public comment on this item. Yes. And I, yes. have I have a comment. Oh, okay. Great. Would you please come up and introduce yourself for the record? And, um, uh, Patricia Aoyama. Um, we are concerned about the close proximity, 15 feet of the proposed addition to the historic sandstone walls. A historic wall located on our side of the property line supports the south side of our house and courtyard. All were built in 1915. We would like assurances that the proposed development and construction activity does not damage the walls or our foundations and does not jeopardize their structural integrity. Uh, thank you. This is just an archaeology report. Uh, yeah, I just it, felt that yeah. I didn't know if it would come back to the Historic Landmarks Commission again. It so will. Well, it was, no, it's not. No, uh, I, it so goes to the same with Family Design Board. Yeah, right. so we'll have to go so, to SFDB and express it to them these concerns. Okay. Yeah. But, Madam uh, Chair, yeah. is, is there... Is there a way that it could be reflected in our minutes I that the should. walls are within yes. our purview, and if this project, you know, this project is going to um, have an impact on the walls, uh, the the reviewers, other reviewers, should be alerted. I think that's that, that's our purview. Can we request that that be referred back to us if there's any impact on the historic walls? I'll have to take a look at the, the plans and see what they're dealing with. Is, is as far as I know, there's there's a distance between the addition and the wall, so um, without seeing the plans, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly we're not the, the building department and or planning department is not going to allow a project that's going to damage somebody else's property, to, you know, to go forward without you know taking care of it. So one would hope so. Yeah, well, uh, those sandstone walls are those uh, landmark or um, so there is a, a wish to at some point have what you call like a thematic district where we would go through the city and there's been some survey work done already on the sandstone walls that were put in in the Riviera mainly um, and they, they are historically significant they're you know, part of the character of the area um, they were also um, a necessity to make the area habitable you know, so it's, 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 two, it's beautiful and functional at the same time and so there is a, a hope that someday we'll have a thematic district up there where we'll protect the walls. But any time I have a project that comes across my desk and there's a sandstone wall, even down in the city, you know, sometimes you have those, those like knee walls, those little retaining walls, um, I always push to have the wall, even if the building's being demolished behind the wall, I always push to have the wall preserved because that is a character-defining feature of our streetscape. And most people understand that once they bring that to their attention. And a lot of projects, they just automatically want to preserve it because it, it's a, it's a good, uh, without having to have a fence in your front yard, it's a good divider between the public sidewalk and property. So people realize there's a value to it in that, in that respect also. Yeah. I, I just want to say that there's some of the most beautiful walls. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, but it's 15, their construction is going to be 15 feet mm -hmm. from the vault. Oh, that's, you know, there's, a lot of tight, there's a lot of tight quarters in Santa Barbara, and, yeah. you know, so construction companies are used to working close to neighboring properties, and, um, you know, they're not allowed to do anything that would, would damage your wall. It's just it's not something that they're allowed to do. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. I just had a question. Is this in any way relating to the... the uh, 
the old Marymount property. Okay. Uh, Clarence Black Estate? Yes. 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 It's on that old estate, right? And is, does this have anything to do with the lower garage buildings to the left of the driveway? Of the main driveway? Uh, uh, yes. They're below the wall. Yeah, I. My house is where the garage was, and there, right, there's a wall between my property and this one. Okay. Okay. Well, I was just concerned because those are, those buildings are important too. Yeah. So it is right where you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. So I, I sometimes feel with these reports that uh, there may be historical things involved uh, that don't. Uh, obviously, this is just archaeological, but I think that. Sometimes there's, it should be should be noticed that there there are problems uh, with historic resources that get overlooked. Okay. The, the reason that um, the art reports often get triggered before I have a chance to actually review projects and before they make it to a design level, um, it's one of the things the applicant can do right up front. And so mm -hmm. generally, if they're coming in and start talking to the zoning counter about you know, what's the process. They find out they need an ARC report, so that's why you frequently will see them well ahead of yes. getting a structures report. So at some point, I'll do an historic assessment on this project to make a determination as to whether a report is required or not, and then that's when you would get involved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, some time will pass. Thank, thank you. Madam Chair, can I speak? Oh, yes. Um, please come up and identify yourself. I'm Pete Allen. I'm the architect for the project. I see. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, this wall that we're... Okay. Push. Push one more time. Push one more to make it bright green. There yeah, you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The wall is not on our property. Yeah, we are doing clear. a one-story addition that's coming within 15 feet of the wall. Mm -hmm. we're not doing, the site was already graded, and we're not digging into the wall. We're not getting close to impacting the wall whatsoever. So I just wanted to make sure that... I know you'll defend it with your body. Gorgeous. Gorgeous and we can't wall. touch it. It's not ours. Right. I just wanted everyone to understand that we're not overlooking some historic resource here. Okay. It's not ours. Thank you. Thanks. Motion on four. Yes. And I have a. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Um, you know that Central Coast Information Center? Mm -hmm. It said here that according to our records, the project area has not been surveyed. Therefore, a cultural resource survey is recommended. And so, who does the cultural resource survey? The, the archaeologist? Is that, uh, I just was curious to know. It's recommended and then. Well, I mean, that's part of our, our um, we have what, nine, eight identified areas that we're going to be surveying through the city. We're currently working on the lower oh. Riviera. Eventually, that would be the next step. I don't, oh, I, I don't believe that's our next, I think we're going back to the west side after we're done with the lower Riviera, but eventually the city will be doing a, a full a historical survey of the Upper Riviera to try to help identify where the historic resources and potential historic districts are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of the motion? We need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I need a I second. We need a second. A second motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Item number two. 329 West Cannon Perdido, archaeology report. Madam Chair, Dr. Glassow reviewed the report and concluded that the archaeological investigation supports the report's conclusions and recommendations that the proposed project will not have a negative impact on any known cultural resources and no further archaeological work is recommended at this location. Um, City environmental analyst Michael Berman also reviewed the report and agreed with Dr. Glassow's conclusion, but requested that the standard condition regarding the discovery of unanticipated archaeological resources be placed on the project because the report doesn't reference the standard MEA mitigation for such unanticipated resources. So it would be with a standard um, right. condition. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Motion carries. Um, item number three, 203 Chapala Street. Oops, I'm Dr. standing Dr. down for that. Oh. Dr. Glass, I reviewed the report and concluded that the archaeological investigation supports the report's conclusions and recommendations that the proposed project 
would not have the potential to result in significant impacts on either prehistoric or historic archaeological resources, and no mitigation measures are required. Well, there are oh, so wait, I, I have a discussion. I have a question. Um, I'm not an archaeologist, but I know that reading through this report, there was an important village site with something less than 100 feet away, and looking through the report, they're just looking at undisturbed ground for in a planter bed for any uh, evidence of archaeology. I, I just... I just want to know, does that sound adequate for the rest of the connection? Am I, am I, it seems it's, it's very near something important. I'm just asking. That whole area. I'm not an archaeologist, but um, I don't know if all the information is here. Are you sure? Mr. Oh, she's she, 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 really good looking. Um, Mr. Jacobus. <laughs> because the proposal uh, includes demolishing a 9,000 square foot building that's existing on the site, I believe that it's probably been determined by Dr. Stone, and I don't know because he's not here to answer, but I believe that he's de would have been determined by him that the site's already been adequately disturbed, that you know, you're not likely to find anything under a nine, it's survived under a 9,000 square foot building, but I can't say for sure because he's not here. But that would be my guess. We do have a motion for approval before a second in part of this. It's unclear to me as to what the procedure is when Dr. Glassell reads his reports. Mm -hmm. You get a letter back, I see, mm -hmm. and uh, it's all very definitive. And and uh, uh, and I, that's the standard procedure. Yes. Every report and so forth. It did, and depending on um, depending on the project, sometimes they are also routed to um, our well. They are routed to the environmental analyst. Some of them though don't don't need to be routed to Dr. Glassell, depending on the project. So these are also routed to the environmental analyst for review. So, so some Dr. reports. Dr. Glassell looks I'm at sorry. it. Um, our environmental analyst looks at it. Um, Melissa Hetrick, if it's a regular project, Michael Berman if it's a city project. Um, and then they both get back to me with their findings. And so that's what I present. I see. Yeah. So Dr. Glassow does not look at every report. He does. I thought I heard you say um, that. The letter reports he does not look at. Those those don't get routed to him. Okay. But he looks at every phase one for city and just general public. He looks at every one of them. Every and Mr. Berman looks at? He reviews the um, city projects, and then Melissa Hetrick reviews the um, pro you know, general public-owned parcel projects. I see. OK, thank you. Is that? Ken? Commissioner Boucher, do you have a question? No, I'm just a little confused. OK, let me try it again. <laughs> Because um, I'm, I have been very rushed this afternoon, so maybe I'm not being quite too um, very coherent. Um, when we receive a report from the archaeologist, we receive 13 copies, and a copy is routed, sent to Dr. Glassow, and a copy is routed to the environmental analyst. They both read those reports, and then they get back to me with a written response. So in this case, in the one case when Michael Berman requested that that condition be placed in the previous report, that's, I believe, what must have been a, a public works or a city project. He comments on those. Melissa Hetrick, another environmental analyst here with the city, reviews all the other projects, and she would, gets back to me with what she Okay, finds. I got it. And then also I get a letter from Dr. Glassell for every report. If it's a letter report, which is a basically proving no um, resources, providing proof of that nothing exists, uh, historical remains or anything, those do not get reviewed by Dr. Glassell. Those are in-house. They're reviewed by the environmental analyst, but not Dr. Glassell. Okay. Is that a little... Got it. Okay. Thank you. We've had a motion by Mr. Howes, I believe. Can I have that? Oh, Mr. Curtis? Well, I have uh, two comments or, or items. Uh, 
the report does address on page six the the burden now or location. But it then goes on to say at the top of page seven that several recent archaeological investigations between the mapped site number boundary and proposed project site have not identified evidence of the village site. There seems to be an unstated conclusion then that there's that site does not extend upon that site of Burton Mound does not extend upon the subject site of this project. But that is not directly stated. And also there are no citations in the report to those several recent archaeological investigations. It would have been nice if those had been referenced in the report because it provides the clear documentation. That's just a comment. Well, we can certainly continue the report. David Stone is David Stone, the preparer. He's not at the meeting, unfortunately, in order to answer your question. So I can't answer that question. It was for a comment, not a question. I'm just saying that to me it's a shortcoming of the report does not one state the conclusion from the intermediate reports not having identified the site. Therefore, there's no probability of the site extending on to this subject parcel and also to provide the citations for those other more recent studies. The other comment or question I had is that this board has already given, I think, preliminary approval to the development project on this site. And I'm just curious as to the timing of this archaeological report coming after that rather than before that. That's standard. You know, maybe I can call Dan Gullett. He's the planner for this project. Do you want me to see if he's available? According to my memory, this project is going to the planning commission or some other group, right? It's going through some other action. And we made positive comments. I don't think we approve anything. Yeah, I think Commissioner Curtis has a point because, you know, the report is supposed to show all the various reports that have addressed this subject property. And one of them is that we've had a historic structural report and several letter reports on this project. And that is not in the document. I think that, you know, to say that there's no other studies that have been done is misleading because there has been. And I don't know. Maybe David Stone didn't realize that. In other words, the research was not done to really clearly find out that there had been a historic structural report. What were the findings of that report and all that kind of stuff? It just really should be part of the document. I have to agree fully with Commissioner Curtis. I just think that there's more information that could be included in this report. That subject is also addressed on page 8 of this report. It says this existing structure at 203 Chappelle is not a city landmark. Therefore, no particular important persons. But it does not reference that there is a previous historic structures report. So it's as if the preparer of this one, the archaeology report, was unaware of the existence. I think we're going to get Dan to come down and address your comments. Sorry. I can't really comment on your comments because it's not I don't know too much about the project. And like I said, I get the comments supplied to me and I just kind of present them to you. So maybe we should continue it next two weeks to. OK, let's continue it. All right. Is there a motion to continue this report? Motion second for a two week continuance for 203 Chappelle Street Archaeological Resources Report. All in favor say aye. Oppose? Oh, no, not oppose. I think we should explain the motion why it's continued. So 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 it's clear to provide additional information regarding the, you know, whatever the mother, the reason for the continuance is, I think should be stated in the motion. The proximity of the project to Burton Mound to Burton Mound to the hotel and so forth. The references to other studies. Correct. OK. Yes. That's correct. OK. So the report is continued two weeks. Thank you.
The next item is preliminary review of uh, 0 to 300 West Cabrillo Boulevard. Identify yourselves for the record and um... Jeanette Cando, City of Santa Barbara Redevelopment Agency. Edward Devisani, architect with the Conceptual Motion Company. Steve Yates, Conceptual Motion Company. Sam Mapis, uh, landscape architect, Earth Form Design. Thank you. Who would like to start? presentation. Uh, I, I would like to just uh, okay. begin, just give you a little bit of context. Uh, you last saw this project back in April, and that was for a conceptual review. We are back today for preliminary. Just to give you uh, where we've been since then, we've also been to the Planning Commission. The Harbor Commission has taken a look at this. Uh, Transportation and Circulation Committee has uh, taken a look at this and likes what they see here as far as the intersection design. We were at Street Tree Advisory Committee last week, um, Park and Recreation Commission next week, and uh, Architectural Board of Review also will have um, a review on this for consent. So with that, Steve? Thank you, Jeanette. <clears throat> if I might, um I'd like to st uh, start with the architecture and the basic principles behind the planning principles behind the project. Uh, this commission has seen this project on a number of, on a number of separate occasions over a number of separate years. Um, so, I'm getting two of them pointed at me here. Uh, that's too scary. Uh, the goal of this project is to really uh, is to enhance the pedestrian connections between effectively Stearns Wharf and the harbour, uh, primarily fo focusing on the West Beach area. We uh, noticed in, in original planning uh, studies looking at this that, that um, for the most part residents and visitors on the inland side of Cabrillo had a tendency to go down and funnel down towards Stearns Wharf and we all know that Stearns Wharf gets a lion's share of visitation um, to the waterfront. That share of visitation is not shared by the harbour and so we began to look at that issue and began to see what are the reasons causing that be the, those behavioural patterns. Um, Cabrillo Plaza, uh, sorry, uh, Cabrillo Boulevard is a very difficult street to cross, and there have been a number of incidences over the years. And the Veterans, the Veterans Association have worked with us closely on this project to come forward and say, hey, we're really concerned about that. It simply doesn't feel safe, and people aren't using it. So, our first priority uh, from a planning point of view of this project is to address the safety of, uh, and to allow people to get across Cabrillo Boulevard and to the West Beach area. In doing that, we also felt that there was an opportunity to address the distance and perhaps the, the homogeneous nature of, of West Beach when you're contemplating going from Stearns Wharf to the harbour. And we know from successful waterfront um, redevelopment projects in other communities that providing areas of interest with a greater frequency is a very, very important component to getting the interest that will encourage people to explore further beyond Stones Wharf into the harbour. <coughs> In the process, uh, we felt that um, as we create these areas of interest, that public art and, and, and public art contributions by artists in the Santa Barbara community would be a very important vehicle to allow us to add those additional areas, elements of interest into the waterfront in an engaging way. And so they're the 
that, um, and I think finally, an overall enhancement in terms of hardscape and landscape uh, um, and wayfinding tools were, were, were the, the, the functional components of the program. The areas you see in grey, um, you might identify uh, the, the harbour parking here and, and off sheet um, and very near to us on this side is the Stones Wall. The areas in grey represent the limits of the project scope. So what is the sheet number that you're... I'm on sheet number AS101. <clears throat> and they will be after the landscape plans. And I'm about to move to 102. So when we address... Uh, Cabrillo Boulevard, we're looking at four primary areas, Chapala Street, Ambassador Park, Bath Street and Castillo. Our primary interest was, was um, improving connectivity from the major transit <laughs> corridors, but we also, in consultation with this commission, felt it was important to have an emphasis on Ambassador Park and to do our best to reintroduce Ambassador, Ambassador Park um, to the waterfront and hence its inclusion um, in these areas. The principles, the same principles that have been applied to each one of those four essential areas. Um, we will be in, in um, where possible, and without interfering with bike lanes and traffic lanes, be introducing bulb outs to shorten the crossing distance for pedestrians. Um, and it's a consistent strategy that you've seen <coughs> in the city. At the same time, we'll be introducing an alternative material, bone bone pattern brick material per the city standard that will identify the pedestrian route across the sidewalk and also provide um, um, visual cues to uh, automobile drivers. We will be, where um, necessary, introducing um, street lights or transportation lights. We will um, be restriping and providing landscaping and landscape pockets associated with those street improvements and of course ADA ramps, etc. And that's true um, for each of the four areas along Cabrillo Boulevard. I will show you this in enlarged view, so I'm going over it in, in, in principal form. We will be resurfacing the, the uh, sidewalk on the um, ocean side of Cabrillo Boulevard with a, um, in replacing the, the existing pattern, replacing it with a great um, scored concrete. Um, when we get to these crossings, these areas of interest have been created where we're providing um, an opportunity for people to have a pause and to understand that there's a hierarchy to the circulation. And in these locations, we've provided additional landscaping by virtue of the bulb outs. And we've provided, an, and we will continue to put in a grey concrete, but it'll be diagonally scored to differentiate that area, and there'll be an opportunity for public art to become a component of that horizontal hardscape of those areas there. We also intercept the existing seawall in those locations. Um, you'll see in, in plan, as I go through the presentation, um, we break the plan of the seawall and we provide an opportunity for people to get through to the seawall and, and to the beach environment. <coughs> Excuse me. At your direction, we have looked to specifying a different detail for that new component of the seawall, so it's demonstrably not um, not the, the uh, not a facsimile of the existing seawall condition, and we've drawn from um, the palette already on the waterfront for that. So as we go along Cabrillo <coughs> Boulevard, and when we get to sea landing, and we have landscape enhancement around a fairly utilitarian area where there are transformers and other type devices, and then we, we introduce a new component at this point, which is a flag colonnade that will identify the pref preferred pedestrian route from sea landing through to the waterfront. And those flags are consistent with what you see on the breakwater on the other side of the harbour. And the, and the idea there is to draw a um, foreground um, relationship between those, those two symbols, if you like, of the harbour area. We've also added lighting along this area, which is, which is presently dark, and really introducing pedestrian amenities that, that, that don't really exist in a preferred direction through, for all intents and purposes, otherwise a parking lot. 
We have also come along and, and addressed this area, this walkway area here between Los Banos and, and the wading pool, and that is being cleaned up. I'll show you and additional landscaping and additional amenities being provided in those areas. I'll show you that in, um, in uh, a larger format. If we come back along sea landing and move out um, towards the water, um, the existing location of the what remains, the existing melaleuca trees remain, and you will notice that we have placed four palm trees along um, sea landing here. They are actually the, um, the destination for some palm trees that are going to be um, relocated off of Cabrillo by virtue of the pedestrian improvements we're making. We're also putting a um, water fountain and a shower for, uh, for use by all the uh, man-powered boating craft that are, that are concessionaires on the West Beach area. And the the uh, water fountain will be a public art piece and an opportunity, as would be the benches that we propose in the project. So, <clears throat> the next sheet, AS103, um, is a, a legend to identify public art opportunities. When you look at each of the, <coughs> the um, plazas, there, uh, you see a symbol S and H. Um, the seawall, uh, when you see an elevation, provides a, an opportunity on its vertical surface for uh, public art and, of course, the hardscape itself. And so we, we would expect to see an inset um, within that hardscape defining that area. When you get um, to sea landing, and you'll see the um, blue flagpole banners. There will be banners associated with the flag colony as it takes us through to Marina Walk. Um, the other designation here, you'll see two green bees. As they will be new benches and they will be art pieces. And you've seen those on Lower State Street, for example, as a bench by um, someone help me with his name. I forgot. Um, just, yeah. um, so that's our intent. The next diagram is a uh, locate signage um, graphic, and let me quickly, <coughs> and this is wayfinding and directional uh -huh. signage throughout the project. Let's quickly go to We have further in the set sheet A601, which is a photo essay of the existing signage down at the waterfront. <coughs> and you'll see um, photograph OA, photograph 12, photograph I think, um, 02 here is showing the typical um, uh, signage standard that we intend to adopt for this, for this project. And you'll see uh, preliminary elevations of that signage. So when we look back at, we certainly can come back to this in more detail if there's the pleasure of the Commission. Um, It is our intention basically to take essentially the existing signage that's working there and make it more uniform and more consistent with that, with, with, with that, with that one standard. An enlarged view of um, one of the intersections and you'll see consistent conversation throughout each one of those. Uh, <coughs> Since we were last with you, one of your comments was landscaping in these um, island refuges, and we have gone ahead and done that. Sam Mathis is here with me to talk about the landscaping strategy there. We've also increased, wherever possible, increased uh, opportunity for landscaping. In this instance, um, increased the depth of the bulb out, increased the depth of, uh, of the planting area um, for the project. This is Chapala Street. You'll see this light, the dark dashed line here represents, if you like, the substrate or the area, uh, potential area for that public art um, essay. Um, this is Ambassador Park. Uh, you'll notice this, that, that there's a symmetry to the palm trees that exist across the street now. And Sam has placed some um, canary palms, I believe, here, Sam. Correct in alignment, um, and they are a different palm than, than the balance of them that exist along Cabrillo now, but our, our intention there is to draw the eye to that relationship um, using landscaping uh, to Ambassador Park. 
Bath Street, same principles, only comments that I would make here would be we extended this um, bulb out in order to provide opportunity for additional landscaping pockets. And you will see the landscaping that is going into the existing, these are the transformers and, and various equipment that are there with the intent to screen. Um, this is a good opportunity at this larger scale to see that the lights, the new lighting will be located between that existing wall and the existing bikeway. So it's truly serving um, the, the, uh, the pedestrian need. At Las Banas, we've, we've made several changes. Certainly the street environment, we, I think we've covered enough. We have landscaping um, in the parkways, consistent with the East uh, Beach Palette. We're retaining the trees and we are expanding basically the hardscape along this area you see the diagonal pattern and then we're putting a deep decomposed granite in underneath the trees here with drainage there is a, a lot of um, guano um, the bird, birds populate these trees and we're really looking at the design of to try to mitigate that currently if you went down there now there are these park benches and they're really offensive to you you can't possibly use them um, as well as the birds do so we've relocated those benches you'll see a couple of them here and we've relocated another one over onto sea landing. Um, but same principles applying. We've moved this fence to widen this sidewalk. And this is an important historic new corridor in the city. So we're widening that. We're, intersect we're, we're intersecting or intervening with the existing fence location to create another moment here for those benches. Two more benches will go in this location and the general improvement in the landscaping along um, the <coughs> this area. Um, the strategy continues. This is now how we cross from Las Bonas across the parking lot to meet with um, Marina Walk. <clears throat> really the principle here is just an improved and more intuitive management of the different modes between cars, uh, bicycles and people. And um, sorry, here's Las Bonas here, I'm upside down, Marina Walk over here. This enlarged plan now shows us at sea landing this location. These are actually the boat launch. Uh, this is the boat launch area, and this concession building is right here. We intend to actually put in a scored concrete um, with curb along this area um, to differentiate this area and to have a path of travel for pedestrians as they move across the sea landing area. And here you'll see the uh, location here of the um, water fountain and the, the shower for the, for the benefit of those concessions. And an extended view, the sea landing building the orientation, here's the walkway right here and, and the wharfs, and here's the location of the new location of the palm trees. Um, when we were with you last, we wanted a colorized version. This is, this is a, a, a colorized version of the palette. Um, really showing you that this, the um, Santa Barbara standard for the crosswalks, the diagonally scored concrete, the degree of landscaping, decomposed granite, and of course the landscaping plans we can look at in more detail. Now this is, uh, this is an elevation of the um, plaza areas or the public art areas as you get to the intersection of Chapala, for example. And we have a photograph here of the detail used over at Chase Palm Park, and we intend to use that detail rather than introduce another element to the waterfront that's already busy with a lot of things. We feel that this would be the appropriate response and would be an appropriate gesture um, when set against the existing seawall. You see it in, a, in elevation form. Science, you think so? Um, I'll go ahead. With that, I would just, there is one other element that I, that I would like to, to show the Commission before handing over to Sam. Um, this is the, the E2.0, is our electrical plan showing the location of the lighting. Uh, we have specified the um, Santa Barbara standard light fixture um, with the Malaga green. And before Sam starts, excuse me, I would like to read the comments that we made to refresh ourselves and also the Planning Commission comments. Planning Commission comments following items are subject to our review. The sandstone crosswalks, 
sandstone shall be used for the crosswalks. Landscaping plan, we shall review the landscape plan regarding the shade trees along Cabrillo Boulevard lookout areas to provide a visual cue to people, to draw people through, maintain the views from cross streets and back towards the mountains, add public art and improve safety by reducing overgrown shrubs and trees, and drinking fountain and drinking fountain shall be added to the freshwater shower area. Our comments were continued indefinitely to the Planning Commission with the following comments. The Commission is extremely pleased that these improvements are being made to Cabrillo Boulevard. There should be some enhancement to the pedestrian experience on Cabrillo Boulevard and landscaping is an important part of that experience. The Commission would like to see an increase in landscaping rather than a reduction with removal of pavement areas, particularly the refuge islands. The use of boulders in the landscaping was suggested as a traffic impediment incorporate shade trees, particularly at the plaza nodes. It was recommended that the symmetry of the design be reconciled in some way. There should be a minimization of the breaks in the seawall with the intent to preserve the existing wall as much as possible. The breaks in the wall should be of material typical of Santa Barbara and completely dissimilar from the existing concrete wall. Sandstone was suggested. Incorporate permanent art into the scheme. It was suggested that it be in conjunction with the state of the art gallery and the street lining is a concern. Please go ahead, State. I'll just turn to that. I'll switch with you, sure. Okay, thanks. Again, I think taking those comments, not one by one, but maybe jumping around and trying to get as many as we can recall. I'd like to leave plenty of time for questions. But as you see, each one of these center nodes, if you will, at this visual focal point down these long streets to the south, we've increased the landscape areas off of the curb by these bulb outs and also interjecting the plantings into the walkway. So we do have a pattern of walkway that works towards the safety of allowing some queuing for this crosswalk and allowing some area to sit and to slow down off the main path. And where we could, we brought the plantings close to those. And they'll be water-wise plants, uh, of course, the city's durability and sustainability list, some of which you can see as a good example along East Beach and the New Parkways. So the intent is the scored concrete on the uh, main walk will match what you see along what's been done uh, from the bathhouse along uh, Chase Palm Park area. And then the scoring of this, again, Steve mentioned, is to define it as something a little unique, even though the color is very blended to the, to the rest of the sidewalk, so it won't be uh, anything that's too uh, contrasting. But the palm tree alignment, I think, was something that was very historic along the Rio, and we didn't want to break that uh, in any fashion. But we do remove a few, and those we, uh, we showed where those are going to go to kind of create something around sea landing as a high canopy that adds landscaping to that area that is now null and void and just sand. Um, the opportunities, um, I think, in this area, we did talk about the uh, traffic calming and uh, the parkways where we can. We did bring in some sandstone and some boulders, I think, for showing some of the native beauty of the, of the stone here, as well as visually creating kind of a natural landscape feature in the middle. Those would be low plantings. Uh, obviously for traffic and uh, circulation to not be impeded as people are moving through this you know, busy area of circulation. So this being Chapala, there's a lot of landscaping in Chapala in these areas. We go the other way. Ambassador Park, I think the explanation was given as to why we broke that line of palms and we felt strongly that the historic nature of Ambassador Park and the old Potter Hotel was something that we thought we could and should break that waterfront and slow people's eye into this landscaped area that I think you really don't see unless you're either walking, but you certainly don't see when you're driving. I think if these palms uh, were brought across, we've, we've talked about a minimum size of at least 20 feet of brown trunk, so we're going to get a substantial trunk size initially that will then match and have a continuity with Ambassador Park. Because these, these are old palms, some of which are 40, 50 feet high and higher. So we can't put something in to, to really look at this historic connection without it being large. So the intent uh, is to do something nice and substantial. The Street Tree Committee is, has found that very, very favorable. Again, the parkway planting is expanded there with 
probably low planting and colorful planting in the center and some higher planting in the middle. Uh, much of what you've seen on Chapala Street and along the East Beach Pal is something similar that would be used. Connection down to sea landing. Again, Steve went through this. And these areas we tried to make as large as we could with certain constraints for traffic turn and, and loading and unloading and certain requirements for the, the actual uh, sea landing area. So we expanded this as much as, as, as traffic would allow. Again, as Steve mentioned, there's existing plantings here that will enhance and increase as much as possible uh, the screening of these utility boxes and enhance and lower plants where they need certain signage that we do want to accentuate. The big area is here at Los Banos. As Steve mentioned, we're trying to create more of a soft area of, of respite, but not allow for the benches uh, and, and sitting areas in there because they really just can't compete durability-wise with the maintenance of what happens uh, in the trees from the, from the birds. But we've also tried to design something that I think is self-maintaining, if you will, the decomposed granite uh, and some catch basins in here with uh, drainage devices into the groundwater will actually allow for the wash off of the of the actual material to go into these catch basins and self clean, if you will, where possible to be to, to make it easier to clean these areas under the trees. Another thing, as far as expanding landscaping, <coughs> it is a circulation area. It is a connection to Los Banos. We really can't plant very much underneath here because the shade is so dense. The Phytus benjamina is very dense, very vigorous. As you know, that is very dark and shady underneath that canopy now. So plant material is really not going to do well except for what we proposed is along this fence, a bower vine is what we're showing to soften that chain link fence that exists. And again, the parkway here was expanded to more planting. All along the east side of Los Banos, we're going to increase the planting of uh, Bird of Paradise, uh, the Mediterranean fan palm, the flaxes, the cycads, much of what's there we're going to be enhancing and, and trying to screen certain aspects of the, of the massing of the building, but to create a lush connection through this link to the, uh, to the rest of the marina. That kind of summarizes except mm -hmm. for the palm area. It's really not changing any landscaping here. Uh, it's mostly safety and crosswalks. And Steve had mentioned these new palm trees we're going to be creating planters, if you will, to enhance the soil and allow the palms to go into a medium that will sustain them long term, and then we'll be planting uh, daimondia and other beach tolerant grasses that will be enhancing this long walk. Because as, as of now, the, uh, the sabots and the little uh, storage buildings for the sailboats are here. This is all open sand. We wanted to really connect that, that landscape all the way down to the, uh, to the end of the waterfront by sea landing. That's it for summary. So, if I might add, actually, one notable landscape element on the south side of Cabrillo in the existing uh, palm tree wells, where we will be proposing, we are proposing to install irrigation in those locations in low uh, plantings and each of those pockets as well. So what Ed's referring to is each of these planter wells underneath the existing trees will be enhancing with the same ground cover palette. To uh, add some color and add some landscape on the base of the wall. Thank you. I'd like to take public comment now. I do have one request. You'd come up and introduce yourself and speak into the available mic there. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, green light. Uh, my name is Skip Abed. I'm president of the Harbor Merchants Association and also owner of the Santa Barbara Sailing Center. And I just want to first thank uh, the city, the waterfront, and city council, everyone for the support of this project. I know it's taking a little bit longer than we'd all like it to, but the process is an important one. So I just really want to start by thanking everybody because my business, which is not on this page, but it's right directly to the right of the boat launch ramp. And my offices are literally floating on the water. So at low tide, I'm invincible to anyone on the sidewalk. And about 49% of my business is walked by traffic. We ask everyone, how'd you hear about us? How'd you hear about us? Oh, we saw the boat sail by. We just so happened to be walking by. So this is 
an important project for me and my business and to continue being on a percentage right to give more money back to the city and also to put it in my pocket as well. But um, it's ever more so important is enhancing our jewel or our whole city is our waterfront. I mean, people, you say Santa Barbara, yes, the terracotta roofs, the beautiful palm trees, but it's this beautiful ocean and this beautiful waterfront that is so, um, so wonderful. And this is going to enhance it so much more. So I want to show my support and thanks uh, today and um, keep the ball rolling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take questions. Oh, I have more public comment. I, may, I, may I have that piece of paper? <laughs> There's nothing on it. Oh. Would you give Not your name for name. the record, then? Yes, I will. My name is Tony Romasana, and I want to thank all of you for putting in the time you do on all the projects you do. I know you get an enormously big salary, and that's your motivation. But uh, this is a very, very important project, and it's been uh, worked on for some time, but it's worthy of the time that we've spent on it. It's, uh, it's a project that you're all going to be proud of. I'm going to be proud of it. Uh, I own the Harbor View Inn I have for many years, and I think you are aware that uh, <clears throat> I've tried to uh, improve the looks of the boulevard by landscaping across the street on city property with city permission, and it looks like with this project you're going to finish the boulevard. It's going to be beautiful, and the people who go there every day are primarily the people who live here in Santa Barbara. So look at this carefully, improve it if you can, but move it along. It's a very important project, and I'm pleased that you're working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other further public comment? Seeing none, I'll take questions from the Commission. Yes, Commissioner Pujo. Moving. Are you transplanting those to the landing area, or yes. you are? Those okay. Large so one that you are removing from there. Okay. The other thing is, do you have a uh, kind of a elevation or a picture of the flags, or is that is, is the flag part of the the landscape plan, the proposed flags, or is the that? It, yeah, just kind of a you know example of what it will be. No. No. Not, are they? Yeah. Are they just like the ones on the breakwater? They'll be. They'll be managed. The, the same. The, 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 the suggestion is they'll be managed by the same organization. So what happens on the breakwater will happen with these flags. Okay. And, um, Anything else? No. Commissioner no? Pujol. Okay. A couple of questions. Yeah, uh, on, the, uh, on, on the new portions of the walls, the the curved portions. That material on top, is, is it sandstone or is it the faux sandstone? Because I believe on, on the um, red lion, whatever it's called now, that, if that, that's not real sandstone. Chase Pond Park. Chase Pond Park, yeah, right. Yeah. The, uh, concrete. Yeah. It is faux. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, is that what you're proposing right now? I think we're proposing to match that. Right? Mm -hmm. We match the detail on Chase Pond Park. Okay. Uh, another question on, on the uh, Domus Light. You know, we, we had a, a, a conversation with um, the, um, I'm not sure what the name of the person is, the, uh, the public works that called the nation. Okay. Well, it wasn't it was the other, the somebody really? in the price. That's the thing. And the comment from the commission was to make a minor modification to the, um, what they call the dog, dog boy uh, helmet to, to cut the rim of that, of mm -hmm. that Domus light. Right. Has that been pursued because there are so many proposed here that that's what I would like to know. No. Don't think we've got that. No. Okay. No, we just have yeah. the standard city design. Okay. And um, on, on page L uh, 2.3 for instance, you can see that one, 2.3. <laughs> the, the, um, is that um, the, uh, the portion on the right, I mean on the left, excuse me, is, is that flash? Is that just a little uh, difference in, in the differentiation in the paving surface, or is that a raised, 
is, is that a refuge? It, does it constitute a refuge, a pedestrian refuge, or is this just a difference in paving? It's a raised, uh, curved area that's got a, a permeable but, uh, but more but we like permanent a, material, not a landscape. We have like a curve, like a six inch. Is that what that is? A six inch thing, and and it works with the turning radius, and everything's being worked out on that. Correct. And it's not landscape. It's just kind of like nothing there. It looks like some stones. It, it reminds me of, of the uh, 154, 101 uh, interchange, the Caltrans thing, that they have some raised areas, but they, they zero landscape. If, if that was that oh, means. Yeah, inlaid sandstone. I think we're proposing boulders, and one idea would be that it's an inlaid stone. Uh, there's been some question about whether or not, as the turn is made, mm -hmm. if there will be some you know, potential tires that would be up in there, and how would that affect any major landscaping. But we're certainly open to study that. Okay. I think the input is with traffic and public works. Okay. And another, um, it's another transportation question. I haven't seen a lot of bike parking. Maybe I missed them. Maybe I saw a chain of, of, of bike, uh, a, a big uh, bicycle parking by the, um, by the pool. By the pool, right. Um, and the city usually does a lot of the, uh, of the hitching posts because they are you know, very um, user friendly. It, it, the nice thing about the hitching post, of course, is that identifies where your bicycle is. It's one there, one there, one elsewhere, and they're not grouped together. And in that sense, they're a little bit more protected because when they're grouped together, when people congregate and you're not sure which bicycle they're touching and so forth. Uh, I didn't see a lot about bicycle parking. Is there more that I, I, I haven't seen or, 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 or it's just a detail to be worked out later on? Mm. Commissioner Puzo, at this point we had simply replaced the, the, the bicycle parking amenity that is okay. there and um, had not proposed to increase by any amount. Okay. There's, there's some added, just recently added parking right by the boat launch ramp. We're being recorded and so you need to come up okay, and speak to, into a, yeah, as long as you're... Down there every day. Uh, Skid Mob at uh, Harbor Merchants and Santa Barbara Sailing Center. Just to add to the bicycle parking, uh, just recently, in almost in the last year, they've added bicycle parking to the west side of the boat launch. Do I need to start over? No, no. okay. Um, to the west side of the boat launch ramp and over by the convenience store along the wall there. Also by the laundry mat, which is over by Marina 4. And on the opposite side where the um, okay. the oil station is, is quite a bit that's been added recently within the last year, year and a half. Great. Right. Thank you. And the um, a question about the landscape plan, uh, and I'm not sure if that's part of the, some guidelines that I'm not too familiar with. Uh, there seems to be an emphasis on, on palm trees, you know, like uh, except for the, the uh, Canary Island date palms. Most of them are the Washingtonia robusta, the, the what I call Mexican fan palm. Is that uh, a reason why uh, there are not more of those or, or more shade trees accommodated? Is that some kind of a harbor guideline? Is there, is there something like I'm missing? Uh, like sometimes you see, uh, what is it, uh, Cypress, uh, Monterey, Monterey? Cypress. And, and that's kind of, it's kind of standard on this area too, right? So Monterey, Cypress. It's, it's, it's rare, actually, hmm. in, in, in this area. Okay, I was just wondering if there's anything else, why, um, if, if um, I mean, you made a decision to, to limit the pallet to, to palm trees. Is that kind of like city policy for maintenance, or is, is it come from, where does it come from, that direction? I that would like uh, to know. If I can speak to that, Mr. Pujot, there's, there's uh, a waterfront view. There's an openness down there that I think is also part of the charm. I think that rendering showed that to some degree. Uh, there's a limited pallet of trees that would really do well down in the sand area or down in that area mm -hmm. in terms of canopy trees. And I think there's also views from the private property and the commercial areas across from Cabrillo that look to that waterfront as their primary view for hotel rooms and for restaurant seating and for the beauty of so we did want to create an ambiance of landscaping but an ambiance of pedestrian friendly landscaping not necessarily high canopy or thick canopy uh, shade trees if you will because if we did get comments early on about the blocking of the view and I think that's something that we studied and that became kind of a, an overall conceptual theme to try to not block views with you know major plantings or groupings of shade trees or, or canopy trees if you will so the palm tree 
being historical was was kind of the theme that really pulled us through to this point. Uh, uh, but, well, I, I could also speak to that from a historical point of view. And I think one of the studies we, 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 we reviewed was the, the Cabrillo study when we were doing the mm -hmm. sidewalk. And, and really following the Olmsted plan, was to, that's why it was planted with all those uh, palm trees, was to have that open. And also it's the only place where you have grass, because you're supposed to have a, you know, really a, a kind of a recreational uh, type of activities. And so the, the emphasis was not on a lot of, a lot of shrubs and kind of things. It was more for a u usable kind of thing. And I think that's what we didn't follow. That's why of the, the, the use of palm trees. In 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 the in the other part in the East Palm Palm Park, there are groupings of palm trees, and I'm not sure if that's part of the historic plan or not, or or is the space in like well like done in let's say in Pasadena and elsewhere, is is that what historical? You know, like it's a certain space in every so many feet, the, the, the colonnade. Yes. Yeah. The plan was very, and we have that plan too. Mm -hmm. It's very, in fact, it's very symmetrical, and, and it's, it wasn't sort of cluster here, cluster there. And so <laughs> that's my memory of that. And seeing the way they, they're doing the, the, the ambassador part, that is very much in the own set tradition. Great, thank you. Any further questions? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Okay, now we saw a plan, and, and it may not be the scope, but around that, that children's pool, there's a lot of lawn. That lawn turf, that's existing right now. So that's not really, around that pool is not really part of the scope. Correct. You just, it's kind of the passageway nearby. Okay, that's another question. Okay, and then um, on some of the details, I forget which page, but... Um, of the paving, you show these little rectangles. What again? Can you clarify what? Let's see. What are these rectangles? What do these rectangles mean? What? What are these objects here? What are they supposed to represent? Commissioner Adams, to the best of my knowledge, there are graphic devices used to indicate the scope of the potential public art component in the hardscape. So oh, simply a okay. So those could be art pedestals or, or tile something. Or inlay, or inlay, or exactly. inlay. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, as far as the public art component, um, uh, that may have not been defined, but would that be a call for entries? Would it be regional? Would it be local? I see Jenny Brush in the audience, maybe, I don't know that she knows, but what's the general thrust of the public art component? I'm happy you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, the art component will be a commissioned artists uh, that will be selected through an RFP process. Uh, RFPs will su be submitted and we'll have a selection panel. Um, we would kindly request uh, that there would be a participant from the HLC on that selection panel. And uh, that would work because of how, especially with the hardscape, we're trying to integrate uh, an art element into the hardscape of the various plazas, that uh, that installation would go along with construction. So we are on a very definite timeline, and we're definitely committed to making this part of the project. But it would be inlaid, so we're thinking, you know, tiles, uh, bronze inlay, you know, various things. We're keeping the materials open at this point. We are planning on coming back, obviously, for your comments once it's more defined. But we're, we're keeping the scope broad in order for artistic interpretation. Thank you. Any further questions? Madam Chair. Ah. Um, your new wall sections that curve, what's the maximum height of those as they rise up towards the center? <laughs> Forty-two inches. Only forty-two. Okay, and the seawall is what eighteen, twenty-four inches. I believe correct, twenty-four inches. Uh -huh. And then, uh, do you envision those as being CMU with cement plaster over them? Mm -hmm. And final finish on them? Would they be painted, or would they be natural cement plaster? Or? You got me. Okay. I, I, I don't think we've thought that through that 
solution yet. The, at this point, we're, we're looking at that face almost that you see there as being the potential for that art component as well on the vertical faces of those walls. So mm -hmm. when we get to thinking about that, we'll have to do something that's as, that's as um, flexible and as, as durable as possible to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, could we go to the plan that shows the locations of the new Domus light fixtures? That would be electrical, and that's this one right here. And so, let's see, where are we? Which that's Bath Street. So this Correct. is one of them. So they start so here; they don't extend any Correct. further this way. Um, and currently, what is there in this section? Are there State Street standards, or are they uh, uh, Cobra heads, or there's a light standard? particular to Cabrillo Boulevard, I believe, along um, along this curve, I think you'll see an existing standard here and another here. Okay. Um, that is particular to Cabrillo that goes the distance of Cabrillo. Okay, so these are not... There, there's already existing street lighting. You're Correct. supplementing that. And Correct. these are the uh, pedestrian lighting uh, height scale Correct. ones. Yes. Okay. And then... Is the entire project within uh, EPV or is some of it within ABR's purview? I believe it's not purview, but outside of EPV, let's say. So, um, areas that are within the waterfront parking lot are uh, part of the um, ABR's. Um, okay, so some of these domos fixtures are within EPV. Okay, um, so I'll comment on that later. Um, and then the stamped concrete on the landscape page. I guess actually that's a comment I'll make later, so I understand what the material is. Um, and so who is the organization that um, is involved with those flags that you mentioned? Currently, the Yacht Club is, um, is volunteered and working with the city uh, waterfront department to change out the flags. Okay. My only recollection is seeing national flags in different countries, but are there other things that, that occur the on different occasions? The, the program that's currently being managed through uh, the Yacht Club, and we have not received a commitment that this project will be part of that program. That is what we are proposing at this point. Um, they work with nonprofits in the area to uh, support the maintenance and replacement of those flags. Hmm. Okay. All right. No other further questions? Those are all mine. Yes. Curtis. Uh, what is the follow-up question on the, uh, the new section to replace the seawalls where the rise-up occurs? And, and my question is uh, whether or not you've done any visual analysis to assess whether or not there would be any impact on views of open water, the ocean, from vehicles traveling along Kirbyo uh, Boulevard by the higher height in comparison to the existing uh, seawall. In particular, since, like myself, a lot of vehicles are now very low to the pavement, and I would have a concern if there were uh, obstructions to view of open water caused by the higher uh, height of that uh, And in addition to the seawall height, there is the curve as well. So the, the total height from the pavement on which the passing vehicles are resting is the critical height mm -hmm. dimension there, not the additional height above, mm -hmm. the, uh, above the height of the sea. Chair and fellow commissioners, no, we have not done that analysis. Um, the Why the height? I think um, if you... It serves the goal to allow someone, when looking down the, the, the stretch of that sand, um, to have some height variation to, to mark these these um, um, pl points in time. This public art. It also has a practical matter and it increases the surface area for public art to, to occur. Um, and thirdly, it differentiates from the existing wall. So I think it would be. Um, I mean, certain, certainly, if the commission were to feel well, perhaps keep it or maintain it at the height of the existing wall, wall then we would just begin to work against those other priorities, and, and they can all be rebalanced, of course. It's quite a low, flat arch. Mm -hmm. I think if you were to mm -hmm. look at where it starts to rise, mm -hmm. it might be 30 feet, 40 mm -hmm. feet, distance where it might climb to a 
uh, height to 42 inches. So again, moving along the, the boulevard, I don't think that would be a complete interruption, but certainly it's a design discussion. I'm if there is an obstruction of view of the water by passing vehicles for any length of time along it. Uh, other questions I had um, had to do with the existing bikeway, which is outward of the uh, the seawall, uh, and whether or not uh, there's any necessity to relocate or alter the existing bikeway in any fashion. If you go ahead, uh, the bikeway will not be relocated. Um, there will be, however, recognizing there's a multimodal intersection here, there will be. Um, two, three changes to the bikeway. On either side of that point of, uh, of connection, there will be um, scores in the concrete to sig signify to anybody traveling by skateboard or, or, uh, or rollerblade or by bike that there is an intersection coming, and there will be also the, the uh, intervention itself with the concrete. Uh, third question is whether or not any of the improvements uh, for the intersection crossings is, ne is necessitating uh, elimination of the existing on-street parking. Will, will there be the continuation of the same number of on-street parking spaces or will there be some reduction of existing uh, on-street parking spaces? Um, all, all current parking spaces will be maintained with the exception of Ambassador Park, uh, where we are proposing the uh, bulb outs and pedestrian activated crossing. There would be loss of four parking spaces. That would be two on each side of Cabrillo Boulevard. I think that covers my questions. Thank I just have additional comments. So I'll yes. in the comment section. I will mm -hmm. now ask for comments, and as we are a half hour over schedule and will wind up being a whole hour, I imagine, can we be succinct and non-repetitive? Who would like to start given that? I'll, I'll start. <laughs> All right. I do share uh, Mr. Curtis's uh, concern about the height of those walls in view of the fact that uh, they may block views. I'm not sure. Also, I have a real concern about fake sandstone, I think, at, um, at uh, ch the newer Chase Palm Park. It's, it's really fake looking. <laughs> and I would hate to see that continue. Thank you. That's my comments for now. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Curtis? I guess we can go this direction here. <laughs> yeah. I would like to, to compliment the project team. I think the, the project is much improved um, and moving in a very positive direction. Uh, uh, and I realize that you have multiple objectives to meet here and that some of those objectives sometimes have to be uh, made compatible with one another. Um, I think you've solved the problems of improving pedestrian safety for crossing of uh, Cabrillo Boulevard. I think that was one of the important uh, objectives of the, the project. Uh, the other objective, uh, principal objective, seemed to be to get greater connectivity uh, between the wharf area and the harbor area. And it's been a little bit unclear to me whether the harbor area is defined as the sea landing area or if it's continuing all the way down to the actual harbor area. Uh, my only uh, disappointment, I think, is that uh, there isn't more that could be done to create greater continuity of the pedestrian flow through the parking area uh, between Sea Landing and, and the main harbor area. And I know that there's a lot of tough uh, issues there. There's the, uh, the boat launch area, which the integrity of that area for its function has to be protected. Uh, and there's also the the difficulty of getting um, through the parking lot itself. Uh, but to me, the the real crunch of the matter is to somehow improve the connectivity of the uh, promenade along uh, Cabrillo Boulevard to the area at uh, at the harbor, and that means getting through the uh, parking lot. 
in some fashion and to make that area uh, more apparent to visitors that there's a continuous path that goes down to that area that, that has some amenity associated with it. Uh, and I realize that may be partly outside of the jurisdiction of this uh, commission, uh, if the parking lot is outside of our jurisdiction, but uh, that's the one area where I think more attention might be paid to improving that connectivity around the Los Banos pool and, and um, through the parking lot to the, uh, uh, and also in the area right in front of the, uh, from sea landing down to the begin, beginning across the front of the uh, boat launch areas. Uh, those are the areas where I think uh, there could be more uh, attention paid. Uh, and I would like some evaluation of whether or not there will be view impairment from vehicles because I think it's important for to maintain the views of open water uh, all along uh, the waterfront and not to have some man-made feature uh, obstruct that. But again, the, the gist of my comments is I'm very pleased and happy with the direction in which the, uh, the project has moved. I think it's uh, very good. Thank you. Mr. Sharp. <clears throat> well, I uh, agree with Ken. I think the design team has done a marvelous job interpreting our comments and concerns and uh, providing Santa Barbara with a, a much needed improvement along Cabrillo. My only concerns are very few, and that is the transition between the existing wall and the new wall and how you resolve the two, the use of real and not fake sandstone, and the height of the wall, and uh, the perception of how the two must tie together and yet aren't going to be built at the same time and all those problems. I wonder if you could even think about all the amount of sand that's going to be brought up onto the sidewalk from the beach area now that isn't there now and whether you have to just manually clean that or uh, if there's other devices in the pavement that could collect that sand and the breeze and possibly uh, uh, prevent people from slipping unknowing that there would be sand there. Other than that I think that it's, uh, it's come a long way and it's a very good project. Thank you. Shamari. I certainly echo those comments and thank you for your um, good work. Um, I am concerned about the flags. Um, you know, I think what what distinguishes the flags are the ones at the breakwater. You really are beautiful, and it says a statement. And I'm just I'm just a little leery about introducing just more of these flags where they sort of become this uh, real estate type of flags, you know, just to wave at people for no real real sense of purpose. And I think, so I would be sort of worried about that. Um, the wall, I'm certainly very concerned how we, you are going to do it in such a way that uh, if someone were to drive around, they would say, oh, maybe this was always here before. And, and because I think that sea wall, sea view is such an important thing and, and it would be good to see that it was always for all pedestrians and, 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 and cars and everybody. So that, I'm sure you'll just work that out. But, um, um, and the lights, I'm sure Mr. House will cover that, so I won't worry about that. But thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. House. Yeah, I, uh, one of my biggest concerns is the wall, and it sounds to me like the height of it is partly driven by uh, an opportunity for art. And first of all, I'd have to say I wouldn't want to see uh, extensive areas of that wall um, incorporated into um, um, public art, because I think that this... Uh, should integrate nicely with the existing seawall and it should not be um, a big focal point of uh, it should be serene and not busy so I, I don't imagine small little pieces of art on the wall are going to work out and mm -hmm. I would rather see that wall limited to more like 36 inches at the maximum um, I agree with everybody else about the stone um, 
If that were an exceptional detail you were borrowing from, then I think that would be a good approach to take, but I, I just don't think it's exceptional. I think proportionally it's a little heavy-handed. Um, I, I, I think the concept you've uh, taken to make that transi transition from the wall that you have to cut and then you know move on to something else kind of uh, conceals rough edges. So I, I like the general approach, but I think there are other examples perhaps up on the Riviera of where there are pillars with a sandstone top that's of interest and uh, something simplified uh, drawn from that but out of real sandstone might be appropriate. Um, you know, I would rather in a perfect world uh, see the finish of the wall um, be natural cement plaster so it's not a jarring uh, difference from the other but I know that it's going to get spray painted with graffiti and it's going to eventually get uh, painted over anyway uh, but I have a concern about it being a white or off-white wall because once again it's just something that really jumps out at you and I know part of the purpose is to identify these nodes but uh, you know it needs to still remain subtle so I'll leave that up to you to really th think about what your options are for that um, as far as the flags the city's sign committee used to review um, all the flags that were uh, proposed for State Street uh, flag program and the City Council wisely decided to uh, relieve the sign committee of that uh, responsibility and handed that over to the downtown organization and that has worked well. But um, uh, there is a liaison from the sign committee who serves on that downtown organization committee. Uh, I'm not aware, uh, you know, because it was in my recollection always that there were national flags on the breakwater and I don't get down there as often as I should, but um, if there are other flags then I think that the, probably the sign committee needs to review and approve a program uh, that sets some standards for what they can be. And I think that would you know, make it easy for the yacht people to handle this without constant oversight. But you know, I, I would like the assurance there's a program for uh, all flags down there. Um, so as far as the light fixtures, just for your edification, um, that fixture has never been approved in El Pueblo Viejo and there are a couple that have snuck in and it's been discussed here uh, briefly and the comments generally were that you know it just doesn't have a traditional enough feel and how about changing this edge of it well I've talked to the manufacturers rep and you know it's more easily said than done so I think they're dragging their heels a little bit too because they're not too excited about having more variations so uh, the bigger um, point is that those fixtures have to get approved for EPV before they're part of the city streetlight standard mm -hmm. and can just get popped in easily anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now recognize that what you're proposing are the smaller of the two fixtures in the standard details and on a shorter pole, so they're not like the others that we've seen, uh, but you know they're they're not ready for automatic approval. Um, and my last comment would be on the refuge barriers for the pedestrian crossings. I just have a really hard time with some stamped concrete or anything that looks like that in that uh, part of it. And uh, I would much prefer either landscaping or actual sandstone boulders or something that, uh, you know, somebody's going to see those and say, oh, I'll, I'll drive carefully. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'd almost rather not have them if they're going to be stamped concrete in there. So that's my feeling about them. Thank you. Mr. Adams? Okay. Uh, nice, nice effort. I love the public art component. I love the, uh, I really like it. It's a great start on a plant palette. This will work really nicely. I guess my comment about the plant palette, um, I'd like you to, you know, I know it's somewhat conceptual, but I'd like you to add, add the, you know, a couple of uh, uh, chamarops, a uh, Mediterranean fan palm, maybe uh, some Phoenix uh, robolinii where you can. It, just the study expanding that a little bit. But I think this is a really good basis, and I, I, I like that. I like the uh, DG area. I think that's going to be quite nice. Um, 
Okay, so as far as my comments, I, I think that, that detail from Chase Palm Park for the gate with, with the round thing, I, I think it's too much. It looks like a, a, a big concrete cookie. I think that needs to be restudied, re-looked at. Um, and now I have some specific comments for landscaping. I'd like to be this, the landscape architect, especially, and, and with the team, to study the incorporation of more uh, Phoenix Canary Ensis, especially at the nodes. That possibly will add some more shade. You have some concerns about visibility, but I think those nodes are key points, and I, I, I think you should carefully consider uh, a larger uh, uh, specimen that's 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 going to mark those in a traditional way. I, I find the Washingtonia is uh, everywhere. They are traditional. But uh, I, I think you should look at uh, how you can create a bigger tree with the with you know like the Phoenix Canary and it's carrying that that theme uh, just outside of that one intersection. I, I saw that you had two of those planned, but um, I really want you to study that because this is a good opportunity to to get a palm tree that that has framing visibility but has a bigger presence than. Than a Washingtonia, and I know it's a whole team decision, but I want you to study that. The other thing I want you to study is um, providing um, some landscape areas on on the mountain side of, of Cabrillo, on that other side where you have crosswalks. I, I, I definitely think that if you're going to incorporate landscaping. Uh, uh, on, on the beach side of things, you should really look at incorporating some of some of this landscaping on that other side as well. And they can be very drought tolerant species as well. It might be difficult to get irrigation, but I think that is is an issue. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, I would also like uh, the the landscape architect to explore where. Uh, 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 on the far side, maybe on the uh, uh, d down toward the pool, incorporating a Monterey cypress tree or two, maybe one. I just think you should study that as kind of a visual terminus of the scope. Monterey cypress are way underused. Yes, they do. They can block views, but but they're they're good edges for people to read, and I I think that. Um, I think that they, uh, Monterey Cypress or two or three could be incorporated in this project. I'm just asking to study the applicants to study that. And then also, as far as the uh, the swimming pool and it's surrounded by lawn, uh, we that's not part of your scope. But I would I would like to see some of these kind of lower interesting beach plantings possibly be incorporated into that lawn where it's not used as heavily. We have a new drought tolerant ordinance and I think this project would be a, a good example of how to either use lawn substitutes or, or, or kind of minimize lawn areas that are not heavily used, just incorporate some of the spirit of using less lawn. There, there is a lot of lawn and I know it's not part of your scope but, but maybe you could you could weave some drought tolerant plantings around the outside edges of that pool. Um, those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm new to the commission. Is it appropriate for me to comment on this? This is the first time I've seen the project. I do have comments, however. I think it would be up to the applicant if you wish to hear his comments. I think that's the rule and procedure. Well, um, actually, if it's a concept review, this is preliminary. I yeah. know, and it's so he can he. My recollection is it's okay if that, if it's okay with the applicant. If yeah, it's okay, that's what yeah. I was. If he's made himself familiar with the drawing and the and the previous minutes because this was heard at a meeting where he was not present. Mm -hmm. um, if he could make himself familiar with the minutes, I think you have them there. Read them. I look at the drawings, and, and, if, and if it's okay with the applicant, then he could comment. All right. Is it all right with the applicant? We don't have any. All right. Well, I agree with the com comments of the commissioners so far, particularly about um, the idea of space 
And I think that the, I see that view at least four mornings a week about 7 a.m. And the view from Stearns Wharf to the pool is one of the great views of Santa Barbara, the bottom of State Street. And I think anything that gets in the way of, of that vista across that, that low wall out to sea would, um, would certainly not get my approval. And I think that uh, Commissioner Curtis and, and the rest are, are on the money. And I think that the idea of raising the, uh, the breaks in the wall with the, and um, capping them with sandstone would, and especially if they incorporate public art, would uh, do a disservice to that view. Um, so my, my whole idea would be to keep that thing as spacious as possible, even to getting rid of those, um, those crosswalk islands. I think that the idea of, of the, the vista is also um, part, the, the streetscape itself is part of that vista. And those are my comments. Thank you. Commissioner Pujol. It's an important uh, project, so... Uh we're running late, but it's, it's nice to, to work out these details. I agree with most everybody. Um, I, I spe specifically, uh, Commissioner Sharp and House, regarding the, uh, the wall, the new to existing um, wall, and the, uh, the comment on the flags, I, I, I support that. There has to be some oversight to the flags because they make it out of hand really fast. And the comment on the light fixture. So all of those comments. I also support uh, Commissioner Adams' comments on, on the uh, Finnish Canadiensis and an additional landscaping and uh, the integration of some Monterey cypresses. I think that, that, that's a very good comment. In addition to that, regarding landscaping, um, if at all possible, and I believe it is, in some of the medians that are now painted at uh, Bath Street and Castillo Street, I wonder if that there was some, at least a low, uh, low, low height uh, landscaping could be possibly be added, as in other uh, locations. Right now, it's, it's a painted, which is not very like attractive. To, um, well, if you go to the general plan, you will see that. Yeah. If you go to 103, I guess, that would be there. 103. There you go. It just seems that, yeah, there will be that on the next one. It, yeah, I, I'm not sure there's a reason why, um, mm -hmm. but I, I know in Castilla there's a traffic signal, and, uh, but some low level, right now, it's, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what's in the Castillo, and, and, and at Bath seems to be just striping, and Chapala seems to be just striping, and, you know, if at all possible, there is a truck to make the turn or whatever, some, you know, curb and uh, some, you know, and, and I, I like the idea of the boulders like the city has done in um, on West Carrillo to protect the, the jacarandas. They have these nice boulders in there. I, I think they, they do work. Regarding that, it's, it's a minor detail, but I want some clarification as to the Bath Street uh, area that in one of the, the civil drawings in C3, it shows a truck uh, making the, the turn into the, um, that's the zone. Uh, when I go to it, it would be nice to clarify what that is. You know, the, uh, if you go to um, if you go to C C one uh, seems to, to C one seems to allow for planting on the on on, on, cast on the career Boulevard. And C but C three seems to indicate that that little um, that that little uh, triangle it's uh, maybe for a double track and it will work. But it seems to have some problems there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, uh, I think uh, those medians landscape they look really nice. I mean, it has some some boulders. And not uh, also this, especially these refuge islands is, is also more than being nice. It's like if somebody crosses the street, if you have a boulder there, they know they're gonna hit the boulder before they hit you. It, it's a safety thing. You know? Again, last. Um, yeah, and, and then I'd like to see some more uh, where the, uh, the additional, that's, that's a minor item, the additional bike uh, parking kitchen posts. I think space like a state street or you know, somewhere where uh, spread apart and, and a very visible area, that seems to be the preferred way to park your, your bicycle. Thank you. Also, congratulations. This is a great job. It's, I mean, I, 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 I hate to sound negative because <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is really wonderful. They're, they're doing a great job. I mean, improving the pedestrian access. If you look at this from my aerial photographs, all you see is cars, cars, and more cars. And you're doing something to reverse that trend, and that is 
wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try and summarize this. Madam Chair, <laughs> oh, yes. one more quick comment I yes. forgot. I see you have trash cans sprinkled throughout, and I'm wondering if there shouldn't be more thought given to incorporating those in the design somehow. I, I know it's a tough thing to do, but rather than just having them interspersed, I, uh, if they could be incorporated very uh, you know, quietly into the design, maybe that's worth giving a thought to. Thanks. Thank you. First, thank you very much. We know the process you've been through. We're part of that process. And we think you've done a great job in responding to us, as far as we know, and I'm sure every other agency feels that way too. So thank you. Secondly, um, a lot of our charge is to think about what is existing, what is historic, and how do you add new to it. In two ways, we're concerned in terms of the new seawall. One is the traditional and much valued view to the ocean from a car, and therefore the height of the new seawall is of concern. Secondly, the transition and construction of the new seawall to the existing seawall. We're concerned about how that's done, what it looks like, and we particularly don't want to see the faux sandstone. You might want to revisit what you're mm -hmm. using since the detail you are looking at is not one that we feel that um, tied to. Thirdly, the flags that you're proposing, we'd like to have a program and please explain how the oversight will happen and what will be in place when you do propose this. The light fixture that you're going to propose, I'm sure you're going to revisit because you now know it is not approved in the EPB district. In terms of functional concepts, the islands, traffic over them, pedestrian, what the construction material is, more bike parking if possible, more trash receptacles if possible, you, we'd like you to look at that. In terms of landscaping, it has been suggested that you study the incorporation of, I hate this when you do this, Phoenix can <laughs> Canariensis. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> and <laughs> Mont Cyprus, My Monterey Cypress, thank God you didn't say whatever that was. And um, although it is not in uh, the scope of your work, incorporating drought-tolerant plantings at Los Baños and removing some of the lawn. And uh, perhaps consider more landscaping on the non-beach side of Cabrillo Boulevard. I think that's it. I think the, um, I could add two more. Yo. Uh -huh. I'm good at note-taking. <laughs> Um, I think it's important for the record to show um, Commissioner House's comment with regard to the natural cement plaster rather than the painted white finish. And we'll pick that up in our notes, and I think that's a, an important thing for us to wrestle with. Yep. And I think also a comment, and this will go to the briefing of the artist with regard to just we don't want that art to take over that vertical face of that wall. So it's going to be, have to be a very discreet and subtle response to, to that, particularly as we lower the wall in height. Well, I, I think that would be incorporated in your whole revisiting mm -hmm. of that whole new wall. Mm -hmm. And those are comments that mm -hmm. I think are mm -hmm. relevant. Okay. But you may decide mm -hmm. in your revisiting to mm -hmm. go another way. Madam Chair, if yes. I could just get a bit of clarification on what the approval process should be for the lights that are not approved right now. Uh. Well, I think we probably need to get uh, John Nawasi up and Jim Dewey to put it on their agenda to come up with a solution and, and get it on the agenda for HLC to figure out what, uh, what modification that fixture is going to be acceptable. So I know that means more work for me, but I mean, we've got to get this resolved sometime. <laughs> I'll have to be the lead on it. All right. May I have a motion for? Madam Chair, yes. I need to just make one more comment. Oh. If you need a 
commission member to serve on the Ah, yes. Board, I would be happy to do so. May we, yes, volunteer Commissioner Drury for that. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to give a preliminary approval or because the seawall is up in the but air? I, I think we should yeah. continue it. No. I, I think we should continue it. That's my feeling. I think that the well, seawall like is an important motion. issue. So Whoever motion to continue this for two weeks or do you want longer? Well, if, if I might, um, the, the nature of this project is there is, as you would imagine, a lot of civil work to be done here. It's essentially a transportation project. As I looked through and I took very careful notes, the transition detail, old to new wall, real, this first sandstone detail versus the real, most of those we can accommodate and respond as we, as we hardline and go to our 90 percent construction. I, in, with the exception of the height of the wall, I, I think most other issues will be resolved through the design to that effect even a program, management program for the flags. So I would strongly encourage you give, in light of the public comment today to give us a preliminary approval contingent on us responding to this very finite clear list. Well, if I may mm. comment, um, I'm, I'm actually reluctant to give you a preliminary approval and would suggest that you come in immediately with an in-progress on that wall. Okay. If all you've got to do is come in with a design for that wall and you're over that hump. Am I correct? You mean so but come back two weeks from the preliminary? With that wall, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, I would rather agree with you just because it reminds me of the bus super stop issue where it's not like a building and we're giving preliminary approval mm -hmm. to the mass and then we'll work out the details. This is all detail. and. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it doesn't go right, we've given a preliminary approval to something that we're not happy with. So, so I have a motion for continuance. Uh, Madam Chair, did you open public comment for this? I did. Did you? Okay. It's been. I just. Um, so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just have a request for some somebody is asking to speak. That was why I was asking. Oh, if but we had. Why? I had. If you wanted to reopen it, I. It's yes. up to you. I'd like to reopen it. Yes. If if you would do, if you'd like to speak very quickly, please. Two problems with. Would you introduce yourself? Yes. My name's Dario, and I have the Alamo and the Villa Rosa over there. I see two problems with that seawall. One is a view. I thought that was a very good comment. Uh, graffiti is a constant problem with those walls, and I was wondering if we could do a, a seawall like the Biltmore has where you can see, actually see through it. Mm -hmm. and, and that way it eliminates all our problems. The graffiti problem, the view problem, and the graffiti problem, and the view problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. I'm Dario Pini, yeah. the owner of uh, Los Aguas, my architect. Catherine Angola, just a few more neighborhood pictures. Oh. Label them to what they are. These are the pictures that are the actual property.
pass them around. Yeah. Okay. Pictures are labeled. They're being passed. Okay. Do you want to describe what you're here for? Right. The scope of work on this project is to repair the um, little fences, the privacy fences that are around here, and replace big sliding, uh, ten foot sliding doors with the window and the door. Okay. In the court courtyard area, here's a site plan. Don, you probably remember this building. You did it back in the 70s. We're trying to keep it that style. So these are the windows around here that we propose to replace. This is the typical window of what's there. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like, and there's actually example of one that was done years and years ago. Those particular sliding glass yeah. doors are 10 feet and they're very large and very heavy and the people are having them, trouble moving them back and forth. And so we want to keep the same concept with the door that goes out to the patio but uh, we'll just replace the door with a window and with a door as well. Is there Anything else you want to say? This is the typical window that we'd like to propose to use. Still glazed instead of single. It matches a number of the other neighborhood windows. There's a lot of different apartment buildings that were built in the 70s in the area. It's a white vinyl, dual glazed, high efficiency window. This is the door that was used. Another one of these, proposing a door like this. Similar to either of these two. Do I have any public comment on this item? Seeing none, I think I'd like staff to speak. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Historic Landmarks Commission. My name is Heather Baker. I'm a project planner with the Design Review Section. I've been working uh, with the applicant, Catherine Dunbar, and uh, the owner, Dario Pini, on this project. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of background as to how this is coming to you, why the case um, arose and all that. It's act this is re in response to an enforcement case. Um, originally, the I believe it's the the stairs and the decks that, that need replacement. Basically, they've degraded, and it was um, decided by uh, building and safety as a, as a violation. And as part of that violation, there was a few other things that were noted. Um, one was uh, storage sheds um, that were apparently in the side yard setback. They've since realized that most of those storage sheds are in on adjacent properties. Um, also, the fence um, needing repair, which may also be on an adjacent property, and the lighting is really a significant component for this project. Most of the light fixtures have broken at this point, so that's going to be a major part of your review today, is looking at the light fixtures that they're proposing um, that are a different style than um, the original kind, but hopefully an improvement. Um, the lighting that's on the property now, if it were to be replaced like for like, it wouldn't meet our current lighting standards just as far as um, polluting the night sky. Although, as part of an enforcement case, we don't ask people to upgrade. So, you know, like for like would be an option for them, but they are um, interested in pursuing another idea with you. Um, and then the other part of this is uh, we did notice while we were meeting with the applicant that there were some things about the plan archives that we have on file and what's there today that are slightly different, which is what led to the design review hearing today. Um, for example, with the color changes overall for the property, um, we w were interested in having you look at the color scheme that they're proposing because we don't have actual like color samples of what was proposed at that time, just the names of those colors. Um, and then the, there is also a dumpster. Could you point out, Catherine, please, where the, um, the dumpster is located? It's located in the driveway in this area here. And before, um, I don't know if you want to reference these older plans, um, there was supposed to be one of these privacy fences in that area, but it apparently was never built, and the stairway configuration for that area is a little bit different mm -hmm. as well. And so these things, you know, they may be perfectly fine, but we just thought that we should run it by the HLC. Um, and the materials for the grape stake fences um, have been up uh, repair it over time and they, they're proposing to bring those all back into the same material. Uh, whether or not that's going to be grape steak or a different type of material, I'm not sure uh, what the applicant's proposing at this point, but this is all um, before the HLC today. And then the last part is the landscaping. Um, I just happened to notice in some of the photos that were submitted, for example, that there's um, corn growing in the courtyard there, which uh, probably wasn't approved by the ABR. Uh, 
back in 1972. But, you know, maybe if the residents are interested in having a garden, having a formalized planter bed or something like that may be acceptable to the HLC. We do want to encourage you, though, not to go too far with asking for so many um, improvements to this is, again, it's just in response to an enforcement case and then getting the plans consistent with, with what is there and a reasonable level. This is on the very edge of EPV. It's not um, right in the heart of it. it it's it's uh, adjacency to Chapala Street on the rear side of the property is what brings it into the El Pueblo Viejo district. You've recently reviewed a bridge improvement for this property. You might remember that. Um, and so this is just looking at basically color, a minor part of the landscaping, maybe just for the courtyard focus and uh, the lighting and the materials for the fencing, I think would be, and the dumpster location as well. Okay? Thank Does that you. make sense? Yeah. Um, questions? Yes. Hi, how are you doing, sir? Are there any drawings? Because these are the existing drawings. And are there any drawings of what the kind of work you would like to do? We propose to take out the 10 foot sliding doors and put in the 6040 windows and doors in that existing opening. Right, but there are no, there are no drawings. It shows, it shows on this elevation, the front page, this one. And, and, and I think and, that I showed it a little bit on the four plans. I put but, the sizes on there. Uh, but it, it's, it's only one drawing, right? Like, like this, this at all. What you've got are the existing mm -hmm. elevations of what's there, and you've got the four things back here, and if I'm head notated, it's really going to happen. Okay, but I, I think we need we need a drawing to show what you're proposing because this is existing plan from. I mean, I understand that, but I think for for, for the board, what you need is to trace this or say, well, okay, you provide this as as as, as uh, uh, you know documentation, but then whatever change you have, it has to be done in completely different drawings. Right and said, okay, I want A, B, C, and D. These are the four things or four, ten things you want. Location of the dumpster, location of what exactly is going, because it's very confusing to have these drawings which are basically done by others and, and they're supposed to be you know, separate. And then this is, I believe this is your drawing here. And, and, and this is basically what I should show exactly what the, the scope of work. Otherwise, it's really very confusing exactly where the dumpster goes or which floor goes where. So that, that was the question is, what are the drawings? And I don't really see a lot of drawings. I see some, but not enough to indicate exactly where everything is. Thank you. Any Madam other Chair? questions? Oh, yes. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, are you talking about his question? Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to clarify that this has come up very quickly for the applicant, and I did promise that I would mention that I forgot to, that um, they were just planning on responding and getting this like for like change for the balcony and door. And we did ask them to just go ahead and expedite, come on the agenda today to get your initial comments and review. They, they're they aware they need to work on their plans a little bit more. So it's, it's they they really um, were generous in, in quickly getting together their drawings to come today. I so. see. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> not a question, comment. Oh, I'm but not it's there not, yet. It's not, I know you're not, but I just want to <gasps> point out one thing, that this is right across from the train station from the little park which is also part this this little park here yeah. is part of the of the um, of the um, landmark and uh, so it's extremely important from that standpoint even though it's on the edge of EPV. Thank you. Further questions? No I know but yeah do you have something to present on the lighting? I have the actual picture in my car. <laughs> well, I don't think we need that. Uh, the pole, so, it, the pole goes there, and this is on the top of the pole. So we're not talking about lighting that's attached to the building. We're only talking about uh, parking lot fixtures. Yeah, and these are poles that were throughout the, uh, the yard. Mm -hmm. And over the years, they were just uh, in the '60s or in the '70s, they had those little uh, white round globes. Mm -hmm. And over the years, they've been broken. And this mm -hmm. property I just acquired in exchange, uh, by the way. So. Um, I, I want to upgrade it to, to a, a nice metal fixture. Mm -hmm. This is existing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how many of those are there? What, four? More like eight. I don't know. From five to eight. Okay. In that, in that. And the height looks like they're just eight feet or ten feet? They're about six like feet. Oh, yeah, okay. six. Cause about, yeah, about six feet. Six, uh -huh. six to eight. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you have a chance to see the color samples they're proposing no. for the color scheme? Would you like to have that presented? 
So that's building and trim color? Yeah, yes. this is the trim, this is the building. Oh. And uh, then we have... Um, and the windows are white vinyl? White vinyl, yeah, the pickup. You know, if they're white vinyl, this should be a little darker, actually. Okay. So let's go to the darker one. And that's about what the building is now, an off-white? Yes, an off-white. I'm not changing the colors. Oh. But we can go with a little darker uh, scheme with, so there'll be a, a contrast. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll take comments now. And this is for comments only. Who'd like to start? Okay. I'll just start. Oh. I'll just okay. get to the landscaping. This close to a major landmark is not acceptable. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Adams. Yeah, the only comment I want to make about the landscaping is uh, uh, I'd really like your trees on this property. They're really nice trees. But there's just one plant of every kind everywhere around here. So if you could look at the uh, a, a refer to a drought tolerant list and get a simple ground cover like a purple lantana and, and plant that generously and get some water on it. It could be a good idea just to just to kind of clean up the ground surface. I actually really like the trees that you inherited on this property or the, that have been there. They're pretty nice. It's probably six but there's just one of everything. And it's probably six or seven sets of palm trees around here, mature yeah. ones, and a lot of big um, bird of paradises. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the the ground level needs work on the landscaping. So I think as a He's a, either as a scope or a future scope, you could you could pick a great couple of ground covers and space them generously and really really make that ground look nice and make the whole property look more attractive and probably use less water because I saw a strip of lawn and so on. So anyway, that's a comment I'm going to make. Thank you, Pujo. Okay, I'm, I'm not totally clear what is the, the extent of the work. I mean, tell you the truth, I just don't, don't see it. I, I'm not sure if staff knows it exactly. It, it, it's like um, it, if some of these privacy fences are different and the spaces are different, then that is not in compliance with the approved landscape plan. I'm not sure if there was a landscape plan. I would like to have that. And then the comment is, well, protect or, or, or start from that landscape plan and, and indicate what needs to be changed from the approved landscape plan. If there is no landscape plan, then we start from another corner. We start, well, what exactly is it, you know, if, if these privacy fences have been changed, well, has the location changed? Then that, that creates, that triggers a, a new landscape plan. So I'd like to see that part. I agree with the comment on vinyl. There was no vinyl in 1972. There were no vinyl windows. They didn't exist when, when this project was, was, was built. Um, I really need more clarification. So it's... it's um, I'm not sure if the light fixtures are replaced one to one, which is one thing. But if they are new, then it triggers something else. So it's um, it's hard to make a comment because we we're not sure exactly what is repair, maintenance, and what is a new project. Thank you. No, no, not during comments. Thank you. Okay. Schmerhaus. Um, yeah. No, I appreciate the the quick amount of time that you had to get everything together and so I understand what uh, we've been told about the lack of specificity on the drawings but it would be helpful next time if you annotated some of your pictures to kind of make it clear what it is where I mean I know you have looking south but this is you know in indicating this is a wall that's uh, um, a garden wall that's new or, or is going to be rebuilt so that we have some idea when we look at these why we're looking at a particular picture. Um, as far as the scope, are you proposing to change all aluminum uh, doors and windows or just some? Just the ones on Cherry that go into the courtyard. Okay, and then I also see you have a brochure on some uh, doors. Yeah. Uh, so are some doors proposed to be changed yeah. as well? Okay, so you know I I won't get into commenting on those right now um, because I think we do need to see drawings that indicate the scope of the project, which doors and windows are getting replaced, so that we can really evaluate that. Um, 
uh, you know, I am ambivalent about where to go with this project because, you know, the objective isn't to try and make it look more uh, Spanish colonial revival or anything, but, um, you know, an improvement from satin aluminum uh, windows is, is commendable. So, you know, I don't know where I stand on vinyl right now. I'd rather see an aluminum clad wood window and you know the work you're going to go through to remove finishes and put those windows in and repair finishes the cost of the windows I don't think is going to make a significant difference but that's for you to research but you know that's just there's, there's going to be a sentiment against vinyl windows on this commission and we've never approved any before so that's a, an issue as far as these lights uh, once again um, they're neither appropriate to the style of the architecture or really to El Pueblo Viejo because they would have been made out of flat panels of glass uh, and not curved and, and, and uh, beveled and all that sort of stuff. That's just not Spanish colonial design. So, you know, I could certainly support a very simple lantern that, you know, has flat sides to it. I think that could work with this architecture. This kind of starts to make a whole different architectural statement. Um, you know, if, if the building department's going to have some say on this, they need to be fluorescent. They can't be incandescent. So if that's if the building department is going to push you that direction, you need to consider that while you're choosing a fixture so you don't come back and, I mean, you don't put in clear glass and then we see there's uh, fluorescent PL lamps in there. So just bringing that up for you to consider. Thank you. Yes. Just while we're on the subject of the vinyl windows, um, that's correct that this commission has not allowed vinyl. We had applications previously, but in the EPV, you have not allowed vinyl windows. We did one time allow the use of wood windows with a vinyl cladding, which they the section they brought in a section and it did pretty much match the historic uh, window. Matter of fact, Bill Boy was the one that ended up in consent approving it. But pure vinyl windows have not been approved in the EPV, so this would be a first time if you approve them. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I have a question. And the question is, this is, uh, as I read the map, this is right next to 203 Chapala, the old 7-Up plant. Is that? That's correct. You're, yeah. that's, okay. I think they're doing a condo project there. So they're, they're, that's in the process. I have no comment. Okay. Commissioner Murray. Um, yes, I m m agree with most of the comments. I do want to emphasize that this is, from, you know, also across from the train station, and that's why I think um, Commissioner Pujo is right that we do need to see kind of a clear plan where we say, okay, these are the existing, these are what you're changing, and so we have. I, I just also do not have a better understanding of what you're doing, and and how those windows are going to be treated, and the doors and the lights, I, it just would help us and would probably help you also. Um, but it is, it is right, in, it's also included in the, the future, uh, um, uh, I think the, uh, the West Beach Landmark District comes out near this, at the edge. The, the, so it is uh, very important to keep it uh, uh, within the EPV guidelines. Oh, yeah, this would changes. actually be right across the street from the district and then adjacent to because the 7 up, the old 7 up That's right. was. Yeah. was uh, now, of course, once they remodel that, we, we don't know if that will be inside or outside the district, but you would definitely be across the street from the district. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Sharp? I have no further no comments. Further Thank comments. you. Commissioner Curtis? I have no further comments either. Madam Boucher has already spoken. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for trying to show us what you like to do in a very short time interval. I think our comments, I hope, will be useful to you because we're probably going to ask you to come back. And the comments I'm sure you heard had to do with, please, showing us a proposal exactly where you're going to change out windows, both in elevation and in plan, details of how you're going to do it. Um, I think you've understood that vinyl will not be accepted, so you might want to come back with a substitute for that. Um, the lights are not acceptable. You might want to look for another substitute for that. There were no comments about the colors, but um, just okay. to give you an idea, and it, I'm, I'm not there yet. That will okay. be the last, the last of my words. Yes. Well, we'll leave that as a, a non. 
difficult aspect of your proposal next time. Can you add one comment? We're not changing any of the fences, we're not changing any of the openings or putting things inside them. Well, I think when you come back with a more detailed plan showing where things are, we'll understand better and um, sure. we will too. Madam Chair, do you mind if I just ask for a couple of clarifications yes. on your direction so far? Um, just because I am trying to help them through this process, because with enforcement cases, you know, it, it is a, a little bit more um, time consuming for staff. Um, so, with the maybe if you wouldn't mind, could they show you where the one privacy fence has been eliminated? That's, that's the one fence I was talking about. Um, would that be okay if the applicant can show you that on the plans? Yeah, yeah so that you. It shows the privacy fence around this area. This is the driveway coming to the property. There's no windows here. This is where the dumpster is. Can and we come here six so that the audience may four see also. Here. So the privacy fence doesn't do anything. I don't think it was ever built. The stairway comes all the way down here now. There's no room. There wouldn't have been room because there's a walkway here that goes to a laundry and the mailboxes. This unit... All these other units that have these fences have these doors that we're proposing to change. Or down here, or above. Um, this unit, the one that is off of the street, has no outdoor private area. And so this is where it might have been. But as you see, there's just the walkway comes down into here. The stairway get it, got extended. The stairway in these plans starts about here, and then. Um, Switchbacks, much like this one does. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, the project description on the agenda says as built work includes changes to material and location of individual unit privacy fences. So, have all these been rebuilt? No. Okay, so what is this about? So, uh, Madam Chair, to clarify, the the relocation is simply the remove the never having built the one privacy fence the and it's the plural part is the materials changes some of the fences have been updated with various materials so um, what is the current proposal for the material for those privacy fences one by you, six dog eared redwood one by six dog eared redwood is is what they'd like to do currently so they i guess you would replace all of them the same way they're not that bad on the existing, the existing material. I would just leave the fences. Yeah, they're fine. We gave you a sample of the material. That's oh, right, yeah. Is. So the, the grape steak, they, what they want to just repair to do grape steak then, I guess. I'll not change any of the original. Okay. All right. Um, what was it you said the building department um, condemned? The, yeah, the, the original violation was because of the, the stairs and the balconies deteriorating. So under a separate permit, they're, um, we're doing an administrative approval for like-for-like -like replacement of those items, uh, with the only change being a change in material trucks for the flooring of the um, actual balcony. Uh, so we just thought that needed to be expedited because of the health and safety issue. But we wanted, as an agreement for doing that, that you know they would come up to date with their plan set with HLC with the other items here. Um, also, just FYI on the landscape plan, we have not been able to locate a landscape plan that we're aware of. Um, so that does leave the question as to how much of this is appropriate for review at this time. You know, uh, Jaime Lamon advised that he thought maybe it might be appropriate just to look at where the major changes might be, like say in the courtyard area where that privacy fence is not located, maybe then just look at the landscaping for that part of the plan. For And that I think would be helpful to the applicant if you were to direct how much of a landscape plan you expect them to come back with for preliminary approval um, possibility. And then really reviewing that dumpster that's now located there, if that's okay or not, if you wanted to give any additional uh, initial direction about that so they can prepare plans for you. Well, let me, let me respond to that. On the, on the landscape plan, they, um, uh, the, and I, again, I'm not sure exactly what the con context is, but the most visible areas, they sh should improve it. You, again, you have wonderful trees. I think the ground, the ground plane needs help. So if you could simplify that and make, make, uh, propose something. I can see that on consent. I don't think this board need, needs to see that because I, I think the whole product. Do I have a motion to approve the that effect? I, I still move. Do we continuance for the applicant to to provide better documentation 
of the of the proposal Doesn't and matter. to uh, what else and, uh, to to uh, to um, study the uh, the material of, of, of the new windows and to provide uh, some landscaping in the areas of uh, in the vicinity of the areas of work and that will be a continuance to the consent calendar do I have a second? second how does the consent calendar person feel about this? I asked him with my eyes. It's fine. <laughs> okay. The board has given that person a good direction. <laughs> Whoever he is. Whoever he is. Better stay healthy. <laughs> Four week continuance. And again, it, I want to just reiterate since there's no landscape plan, you could just improve what's there. Again, you have great trees. Just let's we clean up the ground. The let, let, let's working. clean up the ground plane and make it attractive, and it'll be great for everybody. Yes. Uh, appropriate. Madam Chair, my main concern, um, if you mind if I comment yes. on that, and my main concern is the lighting because the, the lighting currently is, is, is broken for most of the fixtures is my understanding. There's only a couple that are still in. I, I believe so. Yeah. And then Ms. Gans has just advised me that you can't split this case really. So we're either going to end up with like for like the same kind of lollipop style old lights that really shed up to the night sky or, you know, something more quickly um, that is a acceptable on a consent calendar review as a, a different design. A I'm out of the country. No. There's no uh, way I can be here. By the time. Well, can you work on the lighting I, I and bring some? On the lighting. Yeah. I mean, you want a simple lighting, and, and I could, I'm sure the consent calendar person would understand when I bring it in. Yeah. Don, do you have anything to add yeah. to direction on the lighting? No, really. I think okay. you had a good description. Yeah. Simplicity is really important. Is okay. appropriate to this yeah, picture. Yeah. So we're no still at a four-week four yeah. continuance. Okay. Uh, we're still at a four-week because Catherine. No, it's going to be two weeks. Yeah. The project will be a review, and then. Mr. Keeney can come back in two weeks to consent with the lighting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's okay. fine. Two weeks. The enforcement part are the stairs and railing. They're not what we're proposing now. But and the lights. I'm concerned about this missing. Fence, privacy fence there. Well, that was perhaps unclear from the... I didn't okay. present it when I started working, so, sorry. All right. So, all those in favor of this motion? Aye. Those Aye. opposed? The motion to adjourn, Aye. perhaps? Or Second. Abstain? No. None. Thank you. That carries. Yeah. Thank you. We have an item from the consent calendar. The zoo. Sorry, don't. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Would you please? which were minimal, preliminary approval and continued two weeks to consent counter for architectural details with the comment that more landscape should be provided. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission, I'm Adam Sharkey with Blackbird Architects. Um, this is Tyler Solomon with the Tiny And Alan Varsic, uh, Director of Animal Programs at Santa Barbara Zoo. Uh, we were on the consent this morning, and um, we're asked to come back to talk to you. Uh, coming out of last meeting, we um, had a, a couple comments to look at. In terms of the, the structure and building detail, we've added um, added in the color and things that were reviewed and talked about last time in terms of 
checked uh, the plaster, low plaster walls, as well as added detail and checked um, sizing of the steel members that would be um, under the, the metal roofing, as well as the, the main uh, column elements and mesh infill elements that comprise the exterior of the, the new holding space. Uh, in regards to landscape, we um, have been studying that and talking with um, zoo staff as well as um, the fire department. Um, I wanted Alan to come as well to be able to describe the zoo's use of the space. Um, we're, after studying the issue and, and looking at all the factors, we're requesting that um, the zoo not be required to provide landscape in this area due to the, the tight conditions that exist there and the desired kind of best practices use of the space. So I thought it might be useful to, to have Alan describe a little bit more in detail than, than was gone into last time, how the space is used and why um, space is at a premium and, and, and um, how landscape um, doesn't easily fit into that. Sure, just a, a quick refresher. Uh, the space is really replicating an existing space that's being demolished with the creation of the Discovery Pavilion at the zoo. So it's kind of a multi-purpose animal management area. And we're trying to capture as many square feet as we can to kind of replicate the existing space to really have a, a nice an area for the animals as possible while still maintaining the, the service thoroughfare uh, that we've got back there. So uh, the area from a, a guest perspective is somewhat limited in view because you're only going to experience it with uh, the zoo train. So and the expectation I think for our guests for the zoo train is to see a little bit of behind the scenes. So this presentation is a little bit different than what we have on the, uh, the exhibit side of, of the zoo. So I, I think we're, we're trying to capture as much space and there just isn't uh, significant enough room for a planting. And there are also other issues associated with a, a, a planter space uh, from an animal, animal perspective. Um, it has potential harborage for uh, pests. Uh, it may be a maintenance or a safety issue. Um, so we're trying to keep the space as clean looking as possible. And one of the items that was discussed last time was in regards to shading. Um, it was noted at the time, and that's one thing we looked at in that um, and Alan can talk a little about the animal management side. It was noted at the time this is on the north face, which makes shading of the, the roof structure itself difficult. The project incorporates the, the metal roof in order to provide shade for the holding spaces. And then um, in regards to heat gain or ventilation, the, the wall structure are low walls with all mesh invul to allow air passage. And then um, we were checking with zoo staff in terms of what um, heat from above or if additional shading, maybe you can talk a little about that. Alan. Sure. A, a nice thing about having a zoo in Santa Barbara is you really don't need a lot of supplemental heat or cooling for your animals. But I would say, you know, if I had to choose one, we have to do more supplemental heating than anything else. So having something that was a, a bit more uh, warm is probably an easier situation for us to deal with than a cooler situation. So uh, additional shade I, I don't think is required. Um, we've looked at this from um, the different regulatory organizations that would be associated with this, and it complies with all those needs. No, um, we had consulted with fire, and they had just stated that they would not want to see, due to the limited um, widths along here and it serving as both a service road, an emergency vehicle access, and a fire lane, not wanting to encroach on that. Um, uh, so those were the, the factors that were weighing into what's brought us back here today. And uh, additionally, to filling in some of these spaces with planners is going to create a, an issue where you can't pull uh, cars or uh, zoo service vehicles over and create enough space in case there's an emergency for a vehicle to come in and make its way through. Right. The non-parallel aspect was one thing that was talked a little bit about last time of exactly what's um, the existing condition of the buildings here relative to the curb on the other side. Um, those kind of bump outs are what's being used in service vehicle for the spectrum of deliveries and golf carts and others. So the paving of that zone actually allows the, the service aspects to function. So those were the constraints. Any questions? 
questions? Yes, I have a question. <clears throat> have you considered the use of vines? Well, I think the, the vines would provide a, a challenge in that they would integrate with the actual mesh that the animal is sharing. So in order to maintain those, it might be a safety challenge for our horticultural crew. And also, we still want to have selective views for our guests from the train to see some of the animals that may be behind the scenes at that time. So that might hinder that view Thank as well. Thank you. Uh, what is the roofing material? I don't remember that from last time. Yeah, that's a... Um, a metal, it's a colored metal roofing that's a corrugated profile, okay. so and it has a kind of off-white color. We, it's, we have a pebble, is, we brought a sample last time, it's close to this, but it's sort of, we didn't want it to be too dark to be gaining a lot of heat or too light mm -hmm. to be reflecting a lot, so um, that's the roofing material. The, the mesh enclosure itself is just a, a galvanized finish. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and then the, um, my other question is that the last time we reviewed this, I think part of the reason that I had a concern, oh, I see what I'm looking at. I saw these tracks here, and I'm thinking, okay, that's different than I recall it last time, but there is your train, mm -hmm. which was why I had an issue with it. Uh, but, you know, I was thinking, if that's the train and there's landscaping there, I have less of a problem. But, okay. Any further questions? Any comments? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to make a comment. Maybe just want to, to consider that. But I think in the jogs, there's an opportunity to get a, a plant with some presence. Maybe it's a small eucalyptus, like a peppermint willow that grows straight up, pretty narrow, will help kind of break up this elevation. I like landscaping incorporated in buildings. I know this is not, um, it's not a major public building, but again, I I, I, I think it makes sense. I, I, I can now understand why a vine might not want to be used. It could harbor, uh, you know, uh, pests and things. But uh, I, I think there should be room in the, in the corners of the jogs that, that could accommodate some landscaping. But that's my opinion. I, I feel strongly about incorporating landscaping and that is a relatively minimal request but that's my position Thank you. Thank you, yeah, and, uh, in the 10 years I, I served in AVR we, um, we, we used to, to deal with a lot of cases like this like in, we, we call it industrial landscaping an owner that had an industrial use that had tracks going backing up and just didn't want to have zero landscaping and we came up with some kind of a guidelines as to having like some trees like usually it used to be like a paperback a megaluca or some kind of a eucalyptus or some kind of a thing one or two trees strategically located they go up and away and that's it and that's what I would, I would, I'm ready to settle for not a lot of flowers and daisies and, and ground covers and you know but some kind of a presence that that, that softens the appearances of, of these industrial looking buildings you Yes, I'm reaching uh, um, Well, I think that uh, Robert and I, or Commissioner Adams and I, both were um, interested in, in shade for the animals. And I, I, I appreciate your comments. You've dealt with agencies that deal with um, issues of you know, keeping animals. But it does seem to me that on the hot days of summer with the sun directly overhead on that metal roof that shade would be a premium beyond the roof itself and if if there was an appropriate um, I don't I, I suspect that the it's the, um, the porcupine exhibit that's that shows us green space but there's no possible way you can plant a tree there I suspect on the other side of the building yes I'm, what, I'm think, what I'm thinking is that at the height of summer, with the sun directly overhead, that, that those animals are going to be in an enclosed environment in a, under a metal roof. And it doesn't seem to me to be a place that I would personally like to be without some sort of shade or, or um, shade and ventilation. And I'm assuming there's some kind of ventilation system. Well, the sides are primarily open. Right. So there's a lot of cross breeze there. And we have shade because of the, the roof structure. Well, I, I would, as I say, I don't know. I, I tried to go by there, and I, I didn't have a chance. Um, but if there's an opportunity to plant anything, really, um, 
of a, of a, of a tree, and I, as I, the ground cover would be irrelevant, I think, flowers and so on. But I'd love to see some kind of a, a further shade for the animals of a, of a living thing. That's my comment. Um, I agree primarily with Commissioner Pujo. I think that this is a functional area, and I recognize your need to have a place to pull over an electric cart while other vehicles pass. Uh, but I, I, I think that it would make a dramatic difference if there were a couple of eucalyptus planted in those inside corners where, you know, uh, I, I don't think they're going to conflict with your need to have some accessory parking uh, use there. Um, the roofing, I, if it's about this color, I think that would be good, but I think we need a sample of the roofing material to approve. Do you have yeah, one we, of those? Uh, we brought that last time in. Okay. Uh, so was it kind of a medium tone like that? I just don't want to see a cool roof, white, or, or and, and, I, and obviously the darker it is, um, the more it is an issue with sun, because I've been inside a agricultural building that's just, you know, uh, a metal roof, and yeah, it does bake, and um, these are primarily, I think, open on one side, so that's not much cross-ventilation to those, so I think that's a valid point, I mean, it's not, uh, yeah, I, I think you should consider that, but uh, eucalyptus in, in terms of softening the architecture, I think, is, is, is worthwhile, but I don't think we're we're talking about putting those, those do anything for shading the roof. Just to reiterate, the existing small animal holding space that we have mm -hmm. has a, a similar roofing mm -hmm. material, mm -hmm. and we've never had any challenges with heat <laughs> for animals. Well, the porcupine exhibit is really not associated with this management space, and, and also just as a matter of reference, uh, a lot of the animals that are, are held in the management space are like our macaws, they go out to a perching element on exhibit during the day, so this would be more a nighttime experience for a majority of the animals that would be kept back here. No, I just need to <laughs> this is not a dialogue, however. Okay, I'm sorry. But if you yeah. feel that there's something you really should know, okay. please do interject. Commissioner Murray? No, I'm not sure. I think it's all been said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Yes. Maybe one solution to that might be to have a double roof where there's an airspace between the actual material and the inner deck, which allows. Uh, I think that's going beyond architectural uh, aesthetic yeah. issues. Uh, I think that yes. We don't want that to happen, but yes, no, we know that you've got that. You're the experts the in that. Aspect. Um, I don't have much to summarize. I think the uh, consensus of this board is that you provide what Mr. Bouchot has called industrial landscaping and that is not ground cover but a few trees and I'm sure your plant facilities and vehicular circulation department will figure out where's the best place to put them. You know, I just want to add a comment. You can always choose to modify the buildings to accommodate a small tree as well. We're not talking about a giant trunked, thick trunk tree. We're talking about something. Thank, Thank you. you. I still want to wait continuous. Yes. yes. Oh, to the consent calendar. All those in favor? Two week continuance to the consent. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank All you. those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'm afraid there's a, another one from the consent calendar. <laughs> That's why I was trying to move this along. Back again. Thanks, is that? Brian Rocha with Silver Greens Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I'm Michael Holliday and the architect for uh, Silver Greens. Mm -hmm. And um, we met with Don today on consent calendar on a few items, and there's a, kind of one new exterior planner issue that came up that he wanted to bring to full board. Oh, and that's been noticed and included, and I think it was one of the things that came up uh, last time. So, Michael, I, let me just quickly state, uh, there's several 
portions of this approval, and that includes a vent that you will see, uh, which faces out on Delaguerre Street, uh, which is a necessary vent for uh, uh, a flash heater, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this was the solution that we came up with. We talked about a plaster uh, element that would come out and the waterproofing problems and everything else. I just thought this was a... And Suzette also has, was part of this in consent two weeks ago, mm -hmm. trying to make the least of this thing. There are heaters proposed, which on A3, there's a little section at the right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, that relates to the backside of the arches on the photo above. And I have asked for uh, assurance that the heater unit would not extend below the top of the arches. And they have chosen a heater that can be mounted directly on the ceiling, unlike a lot of them. And here is a, uh, a diagram, a manufacturer's brochure showing various ways. And, and it's going to extend down roughly eight or nine inches, and it will be above the top of the arches as seen, like more or less like you see from the sketch from Delaguerre and Chapala Street. Um, and the remaining element is uh, the most important one, and that is they want to enclose the patios uh, to provide exterior seating, and that's why we got here. Uh, they're proposing a combination of wrought iron detailing fencing, which matches the balconies above, and a series of planters that you will see oh. here on sheet A2, and they are a bronze-colored uh, zinc sheet metal planter, and I I felt there, there the, that that was too contemporary for the district. Mm. Secondly, um, they are cutting out, I mean, they are in, including this landscaping in areas that are not landscaped currently, right at the corner right. and down Chapala Street mm. and down De La Guerra Street. Mm. So, um, Again, I drove by the Canary Hotel today and thought that what we ended up with there there was incredibly well done. The planters. The planters. They're level. They respond to the sloping sidewalk. And I think in all respects, irrigation-wise and everything else, they're an outstanding addition to that building. So. Thank you. It's mostly the planter and the material in the planters. That are question. Is the uh, Don Commissioner Sharp? Is your concern that that the uh, these fenced areas take away from the public space, from the public experience, the side, or, that, or, or is it more as a, as a steady concern as to how it is done? That's a planning concern, not a HLC concern, as far as I can see. I don't know if that space was ever intended for dining. Uh, Esau's has come out to the sidewalk. <coughs> you know, the same. Same thing there. That's a, a planning issue, as I but, said. But the concern is, is, is aesthetics. It's the, uh, the the look of the uh, of the plant of the raised planters. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, maybe I can add to what Don was yeah, saying there. So do. basically, we've moved everything in to be on our property line. So that planning issue, we 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 are not out onto any of the any of the public right away. Same thing down here at the other end. And this wrought iron detail matches what's on the other end and as elsewhere on the building. So the real issue that we just wanted to, uh, we've, we've reviewed the tables and chairs, which we have, which are a wood tabletop and a black um, wire chair that we can show you. Um, the umbrellas and so forth have already been reviewed and approved by uh, Don. So really it was on the planters here. And what we came up with was this was a, a fired clay 24-inch planter, which would be something similar if the, if the bronze metal was too, um, was, you know, more than what we wanted to go with.
And then this is d immediately across the street. This is the other square planners that's right right there at uh, Paseo Nuevo, which are the, we would be, it would be the exact same one. We want to go with a fired clay one or something that doesn't have the efflorescence that the normal clay, a lot of the clay pots get, and it look, you know, nasty over time. So something kind of clean, and if, if the metal was more than, you know, was too contemporary, the metal was the number one choice, and then... Mr. Holliday, um, the fencing seems to stop at the column up here, but it seems to traverse the column here. Right, because the column's in back. If that we column look at the way back. Way back. Yeah. That corner yeah. column yeah. is here. I see. And here. So and the root I the see. Okay. So, so, yeah, here's fence. the, yeah, the, basically what we're doing is there's the fence, Got open, it. fence, planter. The reason we introduced this because we thought too much wrought iron was going to be, and there's no landscape out here, so we're introducing a new landscape element here new landscape element here, new landscape element here, uh -huh. and then enclosing this so that they can have a beer and wine license, essentially, is, you know, for ABC is why we've got to have some privacy out here in order for this to be a workable patio. And I think the Paseos, and, I mean, it's really going to enliven this. It, it, it'll really make it more dynamic, more pedestrian-oriented. Thank you. Uh, just can I ask one, one more question? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sharp, the, 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 the concern was the look of the planters or the fact they were not integrated with, well with the, with the railing. I, I want to yes. see exactly if that was that is. Oh, and material, but, I think, too. Well, what, is there an elevation? Where's the elevation? Is there, uh, okay. It's kind of small. Okay, so the, uh, is, is that it? That's yeah. the planter? There's a the planter right there that turns the corner and goes all the way back. And then this was the plant that we wanted to put on top. The uh, white is, stri yeah, David can give it. And, and by, by law, sort of silver green is their name of their company, and that was sort of a plant that we're open to suggestions for something that has a quality by, like that. By law, this has to be 36 inches, is that right? That's what it is, yeah. But it, it's by, uh, in order to define space for the, right. Yeah. And this, you want to... 24. Make, so the top of the plant comes up to 36, and sort of, you can still, you know, you can sit next mm -hmm. to that and it feels about right. And the ABC spells out 36? The requirement, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about the planter? It's a physical barrier, and, and so as long as it's got some thickness to it, that meets the requirement. It's pretty mm -hmm. pretty gray, actually. Is it uh, dimensionally? 24 inches? No, no, it's uh, 15. 15. Yeah, it's 15 by 47 is what these things yes. are. There you go. And then they're they're um, 15 inches wide and 24 inches high. Any further questions? Yeah, I have a question. Have you looked at the ones on Canary, the planters? They're, they're similar to I what you're proposing, them, but they're really successful. Yeah. What's the material? What are they? Steel. Yeah, they're, it's, it's, they're metal. They're steel and they're painted uh, uh, a dark green. <coughs> and they're, uh, you know, it's actually pretty nice. Yes, yeah, it's very so nice. It's they have a diamond detail. Yeah. yeah. They have some detail. Actually, I think I have, I remember seeing them. So, just to get it one more time, I, <laughs> I'm getting closer. So the concern is that, is that, that the uh, elevation is discombobulated with, between the planters and, and the railing. Is that kind of like the way you see it? That never came up. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they're proposing. Okay. The, the other issue is whether or not it was ever thought that the corner should be open, as right. Alex stated, uh, for people to walk through and and that notch is there for a reason and right. and what is that reason? So I, and I have no idea so That would be like a planning commission. Right. That's the a planning thing, commission the, issue The only right. thing I can state is that if you look at the um, way that the here, Here's the way it actually works right there So you got your sidewalk here and sidewalk here and then this is private property right there So the, and the, they actually are paying lease rate on that patio. So this is fully at, mm -hmm. Actually, at the same same rate that they're paying for the interior, mm -hmm. so it's a really mm -hmm. expensive area. So this this has always been envisioned and leased as exterior mm -hmm. patio area to be utilized for outdoor dining. But there's more that there's a you know wide open pedestrian yeah. circulation all around there. Frankly, I think when you put this up, it's going to do something similar to what has happened down at Esau's, which people are hanging out there now. Mm -hmm. They sit there and they eat. It's much nicer than it was before. We had. Almost mm -hmm. this exact same, you know, okay. situation. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, looking over the cut sheet for this heater, it does show clearance to combustibles. What is the construction um, 
surrounding where these. It's all plaster, are. all non non combustible it's concrete, actually concrete okay. deck and steel. Yeah, it is. Okay, so. All right, because okay. otherwise it was showing up to eight inch clearance to combustibles, mm -hmm. even if it's plastered. Yeah, they've actually got the, it depends on which one you put, because some of these you can actually put right underneath a canvas awning, and then huh? some of them you can mount right on the ceiling, so. Oh, maybe I was looking at the wrong yeah, country. It's, there's a couple of things there. Any further questions? No. None? Let's have comments then. Well, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, if I had to make a decision right now, I'd say no on the railing. Uh, so, I, you know, I need to go envision this out uh, at the site because it was certainly how I envisioned this building when we reviewed and approved it before that we wanted to open this up and, and pull things away and I think once you start putting a solid railing around there it just changes uh, the feeling of it um, you know, so it's 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 adding architecture to us, changing uh, how it was presented to us before, and how we went through the process of solving problems and getting comfortable with it. Um, I would be curious to find out if there are ever exceptions to the um, alcoholic beverage controls um, requirements for having a railing, or if it was an absolute necessity. Uh, I'm thinking that if it were possible to just have an appropriately designed top rail with some not too stout of posts but you know something that didn't have pickets that might visually disappear more and keep that openness I mean I, I just have a concern that after hours if the tables are pulled in you have a railing there and it just never has that feeling granted it's nice when there's people there and then it feels lively but you know after hours when the tables are inside that's where I'm uncomfortable about it and I'm uncomfortable with the idea of a railing that just stops and abuts a planter I, I really have to convince myself that that's a workable solution so uh, I'm not sure thank you further comments Cut me. I'm looking at you. <laughs> well, I, I never disagree with Mr. House. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure but do. but uh, I, I think like um, I, I tend to think that the the, uh, the uh, I mean I, I notice being in the corner that's that's you know one block from my office and I go there quite a bit. I notice the, the difference in paving. I always wonder well, what is this? Looks like a mistake. And. Um, and it's also a street that doesn't have a heck of a lot of traffic right now. I mean, it's not like it would, would cut down, but it will give uh, this type of use. I, I think it will benefit the area. I mean, it will create a human presence in an otherwise pretty nasty street, you know, Chapala, uh, from, from the pedestrian standpoint. And so I, I kind of like the whole idea of an out outdoor thing. I tend to agree with the comment on the disconnectivity, the, the disconnection between, between the railing and, 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 the, uh, and the planter. I think if, if, if they're both built together, like one piece, the same, same steel, some details, and the planter has, well, I don't know, some, it's, it's still looking, I mean, it's a, a planter made of steel that seems to be part of the railing. Maybe the railing can have holders for more parts just to embellish the, the whole area. I think it could work. You know, especially at the corner. Um, so I, I can go take another look if, you, if, if the commission wants to have a, uh, a continuance, but I, I think adding a human presence there and there will be some umbrellas and life. You know, this is Shafala Street, and, and it's a street that really needs all the help it can get. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I'm, I'm going to make a comment. I'm actually siding with Commissioner Prujo on this. I think a little life on this corner is, is good. It's a kind of a dead corner. I do like the openness. I understand the sentiment here. So I think, I think that whole uh, planter and railing detail should be uh, restudied. Um, the other thing I wanted to, uh, I, I don't think clay pots are going to do it. The zinc pots aren't going to do it. Um, I, I think that you should, you know, obviously go by the Canary Hotel. And then, and I, I like the, um, the uh, seagrass flax that you picked in a certain way, but. But uh, think about another plant, uh, like a Westringia, something that can add a softness to the bottom, and, you know, kind of integrate it so that seagrass comes out as a bouquet and, and you have something that might uh, soften the edges of such a planter. So I think a, a, a couple of uh, compatible uh, tone plants uh, 
uh, would would work nicely in those planters. I, I actually like the idea of including planters because I feel that uh, maybe more than most corners, this is a corner that lacks enough landscaping to make it look good. We have a couple of Brisbane boxes there that look rather harsh to me, and so I think some some flow, some softness, something, uh, and maybe in combination with the, with the seagrass, which I love the the tones of that, could work really nicely. But go, I I, I would suggest re, restudy that. Go by the Canary Hotel. Look at we're not asking for exactly a repeat, but just look at how how kind of how that adds a softness in a in a in a harsh corner. And uh, how that integrates nicely. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I certainly need to suggest that I was against having tables and chairs out right. there. It's just the railing. But you know, it occurred to me um, that California Pizza Kitchen serves alcohol outdoors, mm -hmm. and they've got low rectangular planters. Physical barriers. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not 36 inches tall. It's, but they got the thickness. Okay, so I'm thinking I would rather a solution like that than to have something that feels, you know, like a guardrail. Yeah, um, and and then I would also suggest that you've got a couple areas that are combined by existing architecture, and the main problem area is this corner here, and the whole intent is to keep the corner open. So I would rather see a compromise solution where you fence in these areas. I mean, you know, there is a big opening. It's not right. like you have to have a gate or anything. Yeah. So I would say you have these tables out here, and if those are tables you can't serve alcohol at, you know, it's not the end of the world. You've got most of this area that you can. So I, I think you need to come up with something that uh, doesn't violate what it is we thought we were approving before. And uh, Do you like the planner idea, though? The, where they, like it, this is California Pizza Kitchen, right? Yeah, I, I think something it's like really that, it's you know, it's I, it's I, I don't mean to though. suggest it needs to be the clay pots, but I think, you know, that's... I wouldn't even mind the railing here and here if that was the solution you need to go with. Just on the corner. It's just the corner. I would rather get rid of all that right there. Thank you, Commissioner. No, not even have the planters. Have the tables and chairs out there. Let people feel like they're dining on uh, the street in Paris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Commissioner Murray? Yeah, I think um, I... I I, I agree with uh, the, the two points, and, but I think it's more, in my mind, you don't want to compete with the architecture. It reminds me of that uh, one we were trying to do down at the, the naval building down at the waterfront. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want something that you're trying to either try to match the architecture because I, I see it as more of an outdoor furniture mm -hmm. kind of thing, and I think there's suggestions that have been said uh, planned, and rather than you know, railing that kind of encloses in this place. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know what to do. Thank you. But more furniture than just... Uh... Okay. Commissioner Sharp? A couple of things. First of all, I had not seen this until today, and I don't believe you had seen it either. So, no. even though this has been reviewed three times on consent prior, or including today, this is a, today was the first time this came up, and so I was taken back and uh, hadn't walked by it and so forth so um, that being said I uh, I'm sort of against a railing that is feeling that it closes off this much there are many examples on State Street of outdoor dining areas with chains and bollards and you name it much more open can be pulled at night when you you know and I'd like you to look into something like that I do think that the planters should be level as you have shown on your exterior elevation and not just sloping with a sidewalk which looks very temporary and could be gone next week and and uh, Canary was particularly concerned about how to handle irrigation so the water wasn't dripping out of these things across the sidewalk um, that's also very important but I think that the more openness uh, whether or not it's all one way or the other you know that's up to you but uh, uh, this is just closing it off more than I think we should. Thank you. Commissioner Boucher. Comments. Okay. Uh, just to summarize, I think you understand that we have a consensus that we prefer to have a more open feeling to the sense of enclosure that you're trying to provide for your patrons. And several suggestions have been made 
as to how you might accomplish that. If you are to use planters, it would be good if it was not following the slope of the sidewalk. Right. And in those planters, if you were to use that C flex, it has been suggested that you use Wistringia. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Can you can you say that again? So With she's, she's amazing. <laughs> Robert, you want to spell that for me? Yeah, a W E S T R I N G I A. Thank you. It's a species from Australia. <laughs> so, would you like to have a two-week continuance to consent? Sure. If we can get, can, but we, everything else is fine. I mean, that, what's happened is we've added this piece on, trying to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But um, all of the other tables and chairs and yes, I think Commissioner Sharp has let you know that how he feels yeah. about it. So, so okay. uh, just so you know, when Commissioner Sharp or Commissioner uh, Naylor reviews it, I'd like to be part of that so we could sit down at one time and look at landscaping and, and you know whatever other solution. Can we get? Um, an approval on everything except the exterior no. stuff. No, we can't. No way to split. There's no way to we split, don't split it. it anymore. You can't split okay. the permit. But everything else totally. is fine. We just we need to move forward with some of these things, and we just can't hold off any longer. So I mean, I think you were in. It was indicated. That yeah, those can be fine. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Who made the motion? Who? Nobody made the motion. <laughs> Motion. Okay. I, I yeah. will second the motion. And vote again. Aye. 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 Aye.